Okay so before this video starts I just wanna say that this isn't my story. It's a fanfic the link will be in the description which will have other links as well. Also with these videos I don't listen to the videos I upload so if there is anything that is too bad or explicit for YouTube then let me know and please timestamp it. Anyways let's get into the video. Hello? Anime Demigod. Here? In this world, there are many strange and wonderful creatures called Pokemon. People who raise these beings as partners are called shinobi. Rarely does a civilian find one willing to be their pet. Our story takes place in the village of Kanaha. In the Ninja Academy, children are raised to become shinobi and take one of many paths. The trainer, one who raises and battles their Pokemon to their highest evolutionary form in order to be the best. Those who choose this path may keep six Pokemon partners to assist them, and if they are lucky and have the right potential, may eventually be raised to one of the five highest positions. That of the cage and his elite four defenders. Some seek to become a sage, one of those who can be elected as cage should the current ones step down. The breeder, those that raise their Pokemon with love and attention, never seeking to force the evolutionary path. A majority of those that choose this path become medics for both human and Pokemon. They are the ones in charge of all eggs given out to the new genin who have yet to find one before that time. The ranger, those who seek a balance with a single partner. They guard the village and their Pokemon friends from those that would disturb the peace. Those that take this path often become umbu later on. They are often called to settle disputes between countries, or between humans and Pokemon. The three types of positions come with many benefits and restrictions. But there is one universal truth. Out of all the cage, only one has risen to the position. That of the trainer. Not once has a ranger or a breeder successfully taken that position. It is to that point that we begin this tale. The one we shall be following is that of Uzumaki Naruto and his main partner Shifter, an unusual EV which has undergone many illegal experiments thanks to a foul section of the Kanaha Ninja Force. Shifter can take the form and abilities of any of its evolutionary paths barring three. Those of Flareon, Jolteon, and Vaporeon. Should he be exposed to any of the three stones he would lose his ability to take the forms of the other paths and most of his unique abilities. And now, our story begins with how these two unusual characters met. Naruto kicked the kin near his foot. Today had been another miserable day. He had once again been beaten by the other kids and mocked because of the fact he had no parents. His head lifted up when he heard a frightened squeak from behind the trash can. Curious, he slowly went towards it, and found a frightened Pokemon. While he was the dead last in his class, even he could tell a Pokemon when he saw one. Seeing how frightened it was, and how it seemed to be afraid of humans, Naruto just sat there quietly behind the trash can allowing to get used to his presence. Something about him must have struck a chord with the little Pokemon, because it slowly stopped freaking out about him being so close and carefully came towards him. He wouldn't know it until later, but the presence of a certain fox in his stomach could be felt by most Pokemon and animals. The sheer power and animalistic presence that the fox had, even from inside him, could be sensed when he was close. Sadly, this also meant that the day he was forced to capture Tora, the cat would take his rage out solely on him. The cat was naturally terrified of anything bigger than itself thanks to its owner, and doubly so when the thing holding it happened to be a bloody demon. The tiny Eevee trembled in his arms, but didn't make a move to leave them. The sad truth was that the Kyuubi inside Naruto was a far less terrifying prospect compared to the humans who had altered its genetic makeup almost immediately after it came out of the egg. Naruto quickly took the tiny Pokemon to the one clinic that wouldn't throw him out on sight. The one owned by the Inuzuka clan. Tsum was a real bitch when she was in a foul mood, but after running into Naruto so soon after being kicked out of the orphanage, she had essentially told the clan that anyone caught treating him like a demon would be forced to spar with her during that time of the month. The idea of fighting a hormonal tsum when her emotions were so out of whack was more than enough motivation to treat Naruto like any other young pup. As a result, Naruto had learned quickly that the animal clinics were safe havens from the mobs that tended to form on occasion. The dogs at least tolerated his presence enough to allow him near, and Naruto had a good relationship with some of those in the kennels. If he could have afforded it, he would have adopted a few that no one else ever seemed to want. Another injured dog, Naruto, asked Hannah kindly. She rather liked the boy, who reminded her a lot of her own younger brother, though Naruto seemed to have more common sense. Naruto showed her the Pokemon, and the immediate change in her attitude was quite apparent. 
It was considered a crime to abuse Pokemon, and anyone caught doing so was warned only once before the creature was taken away and the culprit was sent in for some very unpleasant retraining. Naruto answered all her questions, making sure to stay within arm's reach of the Pokemon. It seemed absolutely terrified of Needles, which sent quite a few alarms going off in Hannah's mind. At the very least she knew that Naruto would never dare hurt a Pokemon like this. He would rather befriend them and work alongside them instead. Once the Eevee had calmed down enough for Hannah to give it a thorough checkup, Hannah found an oddity in its blood work. Naruto, are you sure this little one was hiding in the trash, she asked carefully. Yeah, I hid behind the trash can with it and let it come to me, just like you taught me Hannah and Han. Hannah had shown Naruto once how to get the animals to come near him. Ever since then Naruto always adopted a wait and see approach when it came to animals. Naruto, this EV has some unusual pathogens in its blood. Would you mind if I kept it overnight for observation? Hearing the word observation the EV practically dove into his arms. Can I stay with it, he asked. Hannah debated on what to do, when an idea occurred to her. She had heard Kiba's description of Naruto in class, and it had always struck her as odd. Perhaps she could kill Tunin with one kunao? How about this? While we wait for the blood work to be fully processed, you spend the night at the clan compound with me. That way we can keep an eye on your EV and still keep it close to you, she suggested. It would take some fast talking, and with any luck her mother would go along with it. Should the Pokemon be carrying any sort of illness, she would take full responsibility for it. Plus this would hopefully instill a sense of responsibility and loyalty to Pokemon partners in her younger brother. At the Inuzuka compound. You brought a rogue Pokemon and the village pariah here for the night, said Tsum. Hannah didn't back down from her decision. She stared her mother in the eye and told her exactly what prompted the idea. Tsum watched as the little Eevee carefully started to play with Akamaru while the two boys debated their classes in a friendly manner. Her canine partner Kuromaru and her Pokemon Ark, Arcanine, watched them with amusement. Good work Hannah. But if it's carrying anything, I'll take full responsibility for it, she assured her. That night marked a decided change in the way the Inuzuka treated the blonde. He had surprised a great many when he mentioned that up to that point he had only been able to eat ramen from a stand that was known to be the favorite of at least two cages. Other than that he mostly ate scraps. It was after that meal that many of the clan members who at best treated him with indifference, started to treat him like a normal kid, or Kiba. Naruto was so surprised by the friendly manner of the Inuzuka clan that he actually behaved without flinching. All through the night, Hannah kept a sharp eye on the EV. It was only ever comfortable around Naruto, and seemed to regard anyone who came close as a threat. It never displayed any symptoms of sickness. Just when she thought there was nothing out of the ordinary, aside from some severe abuse or experimentation, the little Eevee shocked her, by shifting into the form of an Umbreon, and then returning to its previous form. A Pokemon able to evolve and de-evolve was unheard of. Once a Pokemon evolved, that was it. It stayed in the new form until it either evolved again or died. The only Pokemon able to change forms like that was Ditto, and the little Eevee certainly wasn't that pink blob. Unless it was a Ditto that was stuck in the form of an Eevee, which while improbable was possible. All of those theories went right out the window when the blood work came in during the noon. Species, Eevee. Gender male. Level, 10. Ability, unknown. Notes, there are a number of unusual genetic markings in the Eevee blood you sent. It could be nothing but all of the markings indicate extreme genetic testing. From what we could tell it would allow this particular EV to shift between its evolutionary forms, though for some reason the original three are locked. Should it be exposed to the three stones known to cause evolution, it is highly possible that it will be locked in that form. Again this is only speculation. Aside from that it appears that all vaccinations are completely up to date, including a few that aren't standard in the kennels. When Naruto returned that evening, Hannah told him that the EV was cleared for any health problems. Does, does this mean I can keep it? It's a he, and yes. Though I would like you to bring it in once a week just in case. There were a few, unusual, things found in its blood and I want to make a progress report on how it does. Thanks Hannah and Han, said Naruto cheerfully. Hannah helped him fill out the paperwork that labeled the little EV as Naruto's partner, though when he learned of its unusual ability he decided to just name it Shifter. And with that, an unusual team was born. Ever since that day, the bond between Shifter and Naruto only grew stronger. 
especially when the tiny Eevee realized that Naruto would not only care for him, but protect him from mortal harm. Once Shifter grew comfortable enough around the blonde, it started to display its very unusual abilities. Like the fact that it could take the form of any of its evolutionary paths barring the first three that the Leaf Nin had discovered. It took two years for the little Pokemon to be comfortable around Hana enough to allow her to examine it without Naruto around. Though anyone else would find themselves flash frozen or stuck to the wall if it came anywhere near the little Pokemon with a needle or leash. Shifter was nothing if not vindictive. And his personality tended to mimic Naruto to a rather strong degree. Something many of Naruto's fellow classmates learned the hard way once Shifter's confidence was up enough that it actually took it upon itself to prevent him from being bullied. Among those who suffered from being frozen from the knee down, only because Iruka had asked him to keep the ice beam attacks to non-lethal and mildly painful levels, were some from the Hyuga and Uchiha clan. Though the Uchiha could usually get out within a few minutes of Naruto and Shifter leaving, the Hyuga quickly learned to leave the boy alone for fear of being hit again with the ice beam. Because of his new partner, Naruto quickly found himself ascending the ranks in the academy. Most of those with partner Pokemon tended to lose their attitude towards that demon brat once they learned the circumstances of Shifter's background. Having Hannah confirm it and show the test results only made that change solidify. As a result, Naruto found his classes much easier and that the teachers no longer gave him a dirty look or tried to subtly hinder him. His grades almost shot through the roof after his third test, to the surprise of many. Naruto was now a contender for the top shinobi in the year. A fact not lost on the hookage. Naruto yawned as he gently moved Shifter off him. The canine-like Pokemon simply loved to snuggle under the covers and sleep against his legs at night, which made moving during the night rather difficult. My dog does this too. Evil, bed-stealing boxer. Shifter yawned widely, displaying several sharp teeth that had recently grown in. Because of the audibility to shift into different forms at will, his teeth tended to be replaced at least once or twice every other month. Naruto made up for that fact by keeping plenty of toys for him to gnaw on during class. It was an unspoken agreement between Iruka and Naruto that Shifter never use his bite attack on the other students. Because of his almost constant gnawing of toys, Shifter's bite attack could cause serious damage. Its jaw strength could be compared to a feral ligature if the tiny Pokemon ever put its full power into it. A fact quite a few of the mobs had found the hard way, Naruto was very happy when people finally learned to leave him alone on his birthday. Naruto tended to spend the mob-free day with the Hokage who sometimes lent him scrolls that couldn't be counted as classified for him to try out. Once he accidentally left an odd bookmark in one, and Naruto learned his elemental affinity years before his classmates. Though it took him a few months to locate some wind scrolls that he was allowed to train with. All in all, things were finally looking up for Naruto. Until his final chance at graduating. So which path do you want to take Naruto, asked Iruka treating the boy to some ramen for passing a test. I don't know. I mean I wouldn't mind becoming a ranger with Shifter at my side, but I still want to become Hokage and that means Bane a trainer. You do realize that trainers are allowed to shift careers if their personality doesn't mix with their chosen path right? Yeah, but no one ever said that the same was for rangers or breeders. I hate to say this, but you don't look like a breeder to me, said Irika. Yeah, Hanan Achan said the same when I talked about the choice with Kiba. Something about my problems with certain types of animals getting in the way. Irika silently applauded her sense of tact. She had carefully avoided the fact that he had the fox inside of him. Why don't you try being a trainer for a few years and then try the ranger to see what suits you best, asked Irika. That's the thing. I feel like both of them would suit me, but rangers can only have one partner. Yes, but with their stylers they are allowed to befriend Pokemon to help them. The only difference is that the Pokemon are released back in the wild once the mission is done. While the idea did appeal to Naruto, the fact was that he had no idea what he wanted to be. You do know that trainer is a standard ninja career for most and that it is usually a stepping stone to the others. Even breeders fight every once in a while, while rangers use the skills they gained as trainers to help when it comes to using Pokemon assists. Trainers tend to pick up on type advantages and that usually sticks with you for years. So I can be a trainer and eventually become a ranger, said Naruto. I know for a fact that some of the Inuzuka have offered to let you pick another Pokemon from their catalog. Apparently you made quite an impression on them, because they rarely allow a genin to have one of their nin Pokemon before they have enough cash or missions built up, said Iruka. 
The Inuzuka clan was infamous for its specialty in canine type Pokemon. It was part of the reason why the care for Shifter was so thorough. More than one nasty cold had been averted because of Hannah's expertise in that area. However, that doesn't mean anything if you can't graduate, said Irika firmly. For reasons unknown, Naruto had failed the last two despite having surpassed the written exam. The biggest problem was that the final exam usually had a jutsu he had great difficulty with, namely the clone. This time though, Naruto thought he had it down pat. A long discussion slash argument with the Hokage had convinced the old man to let him at least try a different variant of the jutsu, and to be sure of impartiality the Hokage would be at the graduation exams too. It was the best they could make of a bad situation. Naruto walked in, with Shifter on his head. Since it was just a measly clone the Pokemon didn't have to worry about ruining the jutsu by being there. Remember Naruto, Henge, and clone, said Iruka. Naruto, in a fit of mischief, did his own personal jutsu right then and there. In a poof of smoke, he revealed himself to be a boy with pigtails. What the hell, said Naruto loudly. The Hokage and Iruka's eyes narrowed. While it was pretty obvious what Naruto had been going for, something didn't seem right. Naruto would never mess up a jutsu he could perform without any seals. I suppose that's a fail, asked Mizuki. Not quite. Naruto, could you come up here a moment, he asked. When asked, Naruto turned around, and Iruka's scowl deepened. Someone had placed a chakra suppressant seal on the boy, which combined with the one on his stomach would ruin his chakra control. Naruto's control was abysmal, but it was workable ever since Iruka mentioned the tree climbing trick. Naruto would soon move on to water walking. Try again Naruto. Perhaps without that blatant act of sabotage you can do the henge properly. But no Warwick or I'll tell Hannah and some. Naruto shivered appropriately. Some terrified most people, especially during that time of the month. Naruto tried again. Henge. This time he turned into the old Hokage, to his amusement. Now try the Bushin, said Iruka encouragingly. Naruto's smirk did not inspire good thoughts. Cage Bushin. The look on Iruka's face when he produced a solid clone made Naruto's victory all the sweeter. Shifter's demonstration by jumping on the double's head only made him laugh harder. Uzumaki Naruto, pass, said Iruka firmly. Mizuki was still seething that the fox brat got a good enough look at the scroll he wanted and with the Hokage's permission to boot. Naruto walked out proudly with his new headband, Pokédex, and the standard belt given to all new genin. As Naruto went to treat Shifter to a congratulatory ramen, he noted something odd on the way to the stand. An odd yellow Pokemon with its hands on its head was walking around sadly. Naruto paused with Shifter watching with interest. What's wrong little guy? The duck thing looked at him sadly. Sigh, Saduck. Shifter turned into its espion form and talked to it, and then relayed the information to Naruto through the telepathy it had developed little over a year ago. Your trainer abandoned you because he didn't want a duck said Naruto in surprise and anger. The Saduk nodded sadly. The kid had ended up failing the secondary test anyway because of it, but it still hurt. It had waited for so long for a partner to be paired with it. I don't see why anyone would get rid of you. You look like an awesome partner, said Naruto. Shifter looked at Naruto, and then at the Saduk. It had a good idea what Naruto would do. Tell ya what, if you want you can join me and Shifter. Anyone who would throw away an awesome Pokemon like you doesn't deserve to be a ninja, said Naruto. Saduk looked rather happy about the idea, and happily joined him. Even if he wasn't the partner he expected, it was still nice to be wanted. Naruto took out his Pokédex and pointed it at the Saduk. Saduk, the duck Pokemon. While it almost always seems to have a headache, whenever the confusion passes it is able to unleash some potent psychic ability. Many trainers have overlooked this Pokemon due to the fact that it is slow to use its full potential. The moment he read the description, Naruto's fox-like grin widened. Saduk always seemed to have a headache, so Naruto had the perfect name for it. Hana always gave him some odd pills to help him when he had headaches, and after a while he learned the medicinal name for the stuff to buy in bulk. From now on your name is, Ibuprofen Asterisk. The newly named Ibuprofen joined them at the ramen stand took it took the new Pokemon partner in stride. Though when he heard exactly what his best customer had named it, he couldn't help but laugh his ass off. Naruto was one of the most unpredictable people he knew, but one thing was certain. At least he was never boring. Mizuki followed the blonde brat and watched him gain a second Pokemon with disturbing ease. Most of the brats would be lucky to get a second that quick. 
As it was, Naruto had the option of either going to the Inuzuka compound to pick up his Pokemon egg, mandatory for all ninja, even with a partner unless they had chosen the ranger path and already had their chosen Pokemon with them, or the Hokage Tower to pick up what was left. The reason being that raising a Pokemon from the egg bonded you to the village better than simply picking one up. Mizuki was not one of those, since he had gotten a ghost Pokemon to shut people up about why he didn't have one. He had a mutual agreement with the Haunter. Uh, I won't order you around so long as you leave me alone, deal. The Haunter liked his partner about as much as Mizuki liked the creatures, so it worked fairly well. Hey old man. Why do I have to come to the tower when I already got a team starting to form, asked Naruto. The old Hokage took a look at Shifter and the new addition, though even he had to hold back a few chuckles when he heard the name Naruto had given the duck. Trust the most unpredictable new genin on his payroll to come up with a name like that. You need to pick out an egg from the breeders. I understand some said that you can pick an egg from their kennels, if you want. Naruto shook his head. I already talked to her about it. I'm going to do a wait and see and let my team grow a bit before I take on any more. She seemed to like the fact that I was willing to train my Pokemon first, since I just adopted ibuprofen, said Naruto. You should really shorten it, said the Hokage absolutely amused by the name. I did. His nickname is Advil said Naruto proudly. The Hokage laughed outright at the inside joke. Be that as it may, you still have to pick up an egg. Your classmates have already come and gone, so you'll have to choose from what's left, said the Hokage. Where is the breeder area? The Hokage grinned, his mood definitely amused more than anything as he led the boy down to the area right below his office. Naruto had passed the area a thousand times and had never once disturbed the nin there, which meant they wouldn't hold a grudge against him, he hoped. Naruto looked over the Pokemon carefully. Unlike his classmates, he didn't want a Pokemon that looked cool or had a high enough stat range. He wanted one that felt right to him. Advil and Shifter waited patiently, until Naruto selected an egg that was on the wayside and the pile was untouched. It took everything the Hokage had not to stare at what Naruto had picked. Naruto had found a Vulpix egg, the first stage of the infamous Nine Tails evolution. It had fallen out of favor since the attack the day Naruto was born, and almost no one ever chose it unless it was the last egg there because it reminded the villagers too much of the Kyuubai. So the fact that the boy had picked the one egg that could cause him more grief than anything else spoke volumes. Of what, he had no idea, but it was there. I have to ask, why Vulpix of all things, asked the breeder. Pokemon were Pokemon to them, so they held no perceived grudge against the creatures. Like I said, I went for the one that felt right. And this little guy felt right to me. Besides, between Advil and Shifter, I'm gonna have all the elements covered at the rate I'm going. The Hokage had to admit, the boy had a good point. Shifter covered more elements than any Pokemon could dream of, and Advil, he kept his snickering to a minimum, covered water. The Vulpix would cover the fire attacks. At the rate he was going, he was mostly missing Dragon, Flying, Lightning, Poison, Ground, Fighting, Ghost and Steel. Though he had the sneaking suspicion that Anko had slated one of her prized Dradini eggs for the boy, should he prove his worth to her. Here's an interesting side story as to how she got a Dradini egg instead of a snake-based one. Rather amusing at the time. Flashback. Anko ran into the breeder area. She was always running errands for them whenever her real teacher or Akimaru couldn't be bothered. As a result, she was more than familiar with how it was set out, and could navigate it like any of the caretakers of the precious eggs. Today was her genin exam, and after the embarrassment of the last one, where it got called off due to an emergency call to help save some Pokemon trapped in an exploding volcano, so all hands at deck, she had finally passed. Unaware of which egg she had, she had taken a cursory glance at the sheet which held a long serpentine form for the Pokemon inside. Since she was running very late, she grabbed one of those eggs, unaware that she had run into the dragon section instead of the poison. Imagine her surprise to learn that she had grabbed a Dradini egg instead of the Seavipper one she had been going for. Later she would blame the fact that she had been working in the dragon section all week, which was why she had even gone into there that day. She never gave up her Dradini though, because she learned that it kept the snake-like form until its final evolution which was only ever seen at a glance in the distance. So when Orokimaru and his Arbok defected, the fallout was much less than it could have been since she was known as a dragon tamer instead of poison. Flashback end. Anko had jealously guarded her Dradini eggs, and rightfully so. 
A few months after she became a genin someone came in and stole the rest of the tiny nest and the breeding pair. There was only one other dradini egg in circulation, and Anko had the only breeding female. Though many were surprised to learn that she had gone into the breeder training instead of the ranger. Especially when they learned of her day job as the T&I's best interrogator. Though the idea of Naruto picking up anything from Anko terrified him in ways he couldn't imagine. Sadly he wouldn't learn until the Chunin exams that Naruto not only knew her, but he considered her a crazy cousin. Something Anko latched onto with obvious relish, since so few were willing to consider her family after the betrayal of her master. Naruto carefully placed the egg in his new bag, which Advil cheerfully jumped in since its ability to walk as fast as Naruto was lacking. You watch over him, all right Advil. Sigh. Naruto grinned, and left his bag open so the duck could see outside. Advil got along great with Shifter, which was the only requirement he had as a trainer. Hinata had picked out her egg under the watchful gaze of a branch member. She had wandered into a random section where she found a woman in a trench coat helping out the breeders send the kids to find a good partner. Hey a kid. You're a Hayuga right? She nodded fearfully. Anko took a long look at the girl. It took her a moment to recognize Hinata as the only girl who actually liked Naruto. With a grin, she cheerfully showed the timid Hayuga to a certain nest that only had one egg in it. I know you like Blondie, so here's a little help to confessing. These little guys are one of the few that match his rather vibrant personality, and are pretty damn hard to find this time of year. It's also one that your dad won't be able to complain about and will match your abilities fairly well. A few years of dealing with Naruto's loud personality, which was a tamer version of hers, had helped to make her a bit more patient with kids. And since the girl obviously liked Naruto, who was Anko to let the kid flounder on her own. She would later blame Naruto, Karana, and Hana's influence for the rare moment of kindness. Hinata left the area with her new egg, and the nest was closed off to the rest of the kids. She never got a good look at what section or egg type she had gotten. As Hinata made her way towards team assignments, trainers were placed in teams to ensure that no one was left high and dry in dangerous areas, she noticed an odd crowd around a single point. Using her Byakugan, she realized that the civilians were all kicking a Pokemon. She rushed in and scooped up the Pokemon, without once looking at it. Her egg was already safely at home, and since her father was waiting for it to hatch before sharing his opinion on it Hinata was left alone. It was going to hatch sometime in the week, but not today. Hyuga were one of the few clans able to tell how long it took for an egg to hatch. Once Hinata managed to rescue the poor thing, she found herself at a loss as to where to take it. At least until Kiba showed up. Hey Hinata. What's that in your arms? I found the civilians torturing this poor thing, she said timidly. Another one huh? Come on, I'll take you to Hana. She took care of Shifter the first time Naruto found him, said Kiba. Kiba viewed Naruto as his brother, since the fox boy's relationship with Shifter was so similar to the one he had with Akamaru. He had also heard tales of how Naruto originally found Shifter for quite some time from the blonde when he first showed up with the tiny Pokemon. Hana looked up, and saw her brother. What did you do now Kiba, she said patiently. Hanane, Hinata found the civilians bullying a Pokemon. She didn't know where to take it to get treatment, said Kiba. Hana looked past him to reveal the Hyuga heiress with a Pokemon in her arms. What kind she couldn't tell. Come in the back with me Hinata-san. We'll look over what you saved. Did you recognize any of the civilians? Hinata had, before she rescued the Pokemon. She gave the names without question. Bullying or abusing Pokemon was a crime punishable with prison time along with traitors. Especially if it wasn't their first offense. When Hinata placed the Pokemon on the table, her eyes widened in shock. She had rescued a baby Vulpix. She knew that they were frowned upon after the Cubabai's attack, but that was no excuse to take it out on an infant. Hannah looked it over and after some inspection gave it a clean bill of health. Well it looks like there wasn't any permanent damage, though this little girl seems to have just been born. She probably snuck out of the breeding area, said Hannah. Why did the civilians kick her like that? She's only a baby, said Hinata in shock. Civilians can't see past their own hate of the fox. Believe me, I know that fact a bit more painfully than most, because they used to take it out on Naruto. This was one of his few safe areas from the mobs before Shifter forced them to stop. The tiny Vulpix tried to walk, but kept tripping on its own feet. It managed to get towards Hinata though and looked at her with big eyes. It certainly seems to like you though. Would you like to keep it? 
I'm sure even Hayashi would understand that you were only doing your duty in protecting our Pokemon partners. Hinata nodded, though her father was sure to be angry at the fact that she had rescued a Vulpix. Sensing that the girl might get into trouble with her father, Hannah took Hinata with her to see the Hokage and file a formal report. Hinata left that office with a note for her father praising her for her quick thinking and protection of one of their allies, despite the danger she could have been in. That was the only reason her father didn't kick her and the infant out. Hayashi wasn't a fan of the fox, or any of its very distant cousins, but after reading the note from the Hokage about her actions he at least didn't complain about the infant's presence. A fact Hinata took to heart, since it meant the infant Vulpix was hers to keep. A few days later her egg hatched into a very rare Ryalu, which garnered a very, very rare compliment on her choice of eggs from her father and the elders. Ryalu, while a fighting type, was one of the few Pokemon that could match a Hyuga in battle. Their aura tricks were so similar to the Jayakin that most Hyuga often tried to get one at some point. Hinata was the first in the clan to ever receive one at the start. She made a note to thank the nice Jounin who helped her get that specific egg with some homemade dango, after she inquired as to the woman's name. Iruka stared at his class with a pleased eye. Naruto had surprised a few people three days ago, by accidental capturing Mizuki who had tried to flee with the Forbidden Scroll. The soon-to-be-dead traitor had blabbed about his condition, which Naruto had laughed with amused tears in his eyes at. If he truly was the fox, then Shifter wouldn't be his partner and lifelong friend, now would he? Naruto had beaten Mizuki within an inch of his life, and it hadn't escaped his notice that the man's haunter did nothing but laugh at him. As payment for protecting the scroll and helping Enko catch the traitor, Naruto is allowed another look at the contents and could use another jutsu from it outside Konoha. The Hokage didn't know which one the boy chose, only that he made a note of the hand signs in his own code book, and had occasionally trained with it in one of the more secluded training grounds. Enko ended up adopting the man's haunter, who had taken a liking to how she treated his partner. As a result she had a new friend to help her scare people into talking. Alright everyone. Here are the team matchups, yelled Irika. The class settled down. Naruto bounced excitedly, only stopping once Shifter took a swipe at his ear in protest. Like Akamara the Eevee loved to ride on his head. Team 7 will be Kiba Inuzuka, Sakura Harano, and Shino Abarame. Team 8 will be Naruto Uzumaki, Hinata Hayuga, and Suzuki Uchiha. Team 9 is still in circulation, so Team 10 will be Ino Yamanaka, Shikamaru Nara, and Shuji Akimichi. Originally Sakura was going to be on the same team as Naruto and Hinata with Kiba. However after a report from Anko that the girl actually liked the fox container and didn't hit him upon occasion, something the Harano girl had developed a rather disturbing habit of late, the Hokage decided to switch the girls. And by extension the teachers. Kakashi would probably be a better influence on the Inuzuka, seeing as how he was a more tracking based ranger. If the Uchiha awakened his Dujitsu, then he could ask for advice from the man. Karana showed up on time, her Mistrevious floating beside her. Team 8 left along with Team 10, and Team 7 had to wait two long hours for Kakashi to show up. Alright, I want a basic profile. Name, likes, dislikes and dreams. You first blondie, said Karana. She didn't mention that she already knew about as much as she could from Anko about the blonde. And Hinata considered her a second mother figure. About the only mystery was the Uchiha. Naruto Uzumaki. I like Shifter, Advil, and my new Vulpix Karama. Oh, and Ramen, can't forget that. I dislike it when people abuse Pokemon, those that can't take the hint that Shifter is my partner by choice and not forced, the three minutes it takes for Ramen to be ready and anything related to paperwork. My dream is to one day become Hokage, said Naruto. Anything else? Karana heard there was another dream the boy had through Anko, who had countered it with one of her own. I do one day dream of having a pool filled with Ichiraku ramen that I can just dive in. Said Naruto sheepishly. Karana snorted. She looked at Hinata. My name is Hinata Hayuga. I like Pokemon, reading books, and learning new techniques. I dislike the caged bird seal my family employs, bullying, and seeing people hurt. My dream is to one day unite the Hayuga clan under one name and abolish the entire practice of applying seals to those under the branch family, said Hinata nervously. Karana knew of her affection for the blonde, and said nothing about it. My name is Suzuki Uchiha. I like fire, gardening and plotting the demise of a certain man. I dislike fangirls with a passion. My dream is to one day kill a certain person and restore my clan to its former glory, 
said Suzuki stoically. Karana had a bit of inspiration as she looked him square in the eye and told him he might want to pick a better dream. Naruto apparently saw where she was going with that idea because he snickered loudly. Why should I change my dream, asked Suzuki indignant. Because Ankone's dream is to kill one of the Sunin, and she won't like having someone not even a Chunin trying to steal her line, said Naruto. And Anko happens to be one of the only dragon-type trainers in the village, so if yours got sick you would be out of luck, said Karana. She also happens to be one of the best interrogators in the village, and she doesn't mind dropping snakes on people who annoy her, said Naruto. Suzuki looked annoyed. They had raised valid points, so he looked at them and said, well what would you suggest? Me? Taking out the civilian council, especially the three old geezers who are allowed to stay during shinobi meetings, said Naruto. His new team gave him an odd look, so he hastily explained. Those old geezers cause nothing but trouble for the old man, and the civilian council rarely actually does anything. Do you know how many times I've heard people bitch about the fact that they mostly sit on their asses during meetings and the only thing they ever really try to do is get me killed, said Naruto. Karana thought about that, and reluctantly admitted he did have a point. More than a few store owners complained about the civilian council. Which begged the question as to how they were still sitting in the same seats after the elections every other year. My name is Karana Yuhai. My likes are Genjutsu, flavored tea, and reading. My dislikes are the books known as Ika Ika, perverts, and people who think women can't be real ninja. My dream is to live to see a woman take the hokage position. That was her new goal after meeting her original one years ago. We'll take a skills test tomorrow at noon, and I will determine if you are fit to becoming Genin, she said firmly. None of them complained, and decided to brush up on their skills later so they could pass their test. Naruto ran into Hinata on the way to the training grounds. In his hands was a large bento set that Hana helped him to make. She told him that he could share it as a show of faith to his new team. Considering how he used to be bullied until Shifter displayed its rather potent bite strength, it was an easy decision. Suzuki was there as well, reading a book on gardening. Naruto took one look at the title and said you know the one by Hikari Midori has some better ideas. She even explains why certain soils don't work with plants from various countries. Suzuki looked up, his interest peaked. Really? Yeah, I could never figure out why my herb garden kept having so much trouble sprouting until I found her book series on plants, soils compositions, and water types. You know where I could get a copy. If we pass this I'll lend you mine. I sometimes run into her at the bookstore, said Naruto. Karana grinned from her spot under the genjutsu. They were already showing signs of being a real team. Alright kids, now in order to become official genin you have to land a hit on me. You have three hours to either hit me physically with your jutsu or have one of your Pokemon land a blow. Naruto didn't look too enthusiastic about the test, but he would give it his all. Begin. So what do we do, asked Hinata. I have no idea. Kurane Yuahai, one of the rare Jounin who can place a genjutsu on a Pokemon and get it to stick. How the hell are we going to land a hit on someone who can fool a Pokemon, asked Suzuki. No clue. I suck at genjutsu, said Naruto. Ano, most genjutsu can be dispelled with a kai. Some kinds can be dispelled with a chakra pulse, though those are harder. The problem is I don't know how to do either, said Naruto. I have an idea. Hinata, can your Ryala sense chakra? Haru is good at aura sensing, but I don't know if he'll be able to find Kurane sensei, said Hinata. He doesn't need to find her for us, we just need him to figure out if she's a fake or not. Naruto, how good is Shifter's sense of smell? Damn near that of an Inuzuka hound. Hanane showed me how to train that aspect, so he's at roughly the same level as Akamaru. Alright, then you can tell if it's her. Haru and Shifter can work in conjunction to figure out if she's a fake or not, said Suzuki. What about you? Hano will work using his flames with my fire attacks to try to land a hit on Kurane sensei Think you two can follow my directions. I'll do it if you follow ours when it comes to our specialties, said Naruto after thinking about it. Deal. The three started running together, occasionally finding a clone of their teacher. Kurane left a few fakes for them to play with as a test. After two and a half hours, the three were tired. However they had eliminated almost all the fakes in that time. Finally they confronted the real Kurane. Well done. Most genin wouldn't figure out that they had to work together to find me, said Kurane. They were all bone tired, well, except for Advil. The poor Siduk had a massive migraine 
trying to figure out which of the fakes was real. Right as Kurane was about to tell them the true purpose of the real final exam, Advil let out a cry. Sayayayay. His eyes turned white all around and started to glow. Without warning, Kurane was lifted up in the air with an indignant squawk or protest. Naruto pulled his backpack around, and Advil kept their teacher up in the air. Advil, you okay? Naruto started to rub the duck's head, and Advil carefully let down Kurane. It went to sleep in Naruto's arms, his energy spent. Kurane stared at the duck in disbelief. She had forgotten all about it since it wasn't actually doing anything, and Kurama was still helping out Suzuki's Charmander Hano. She had heard that when a Saduk worked through its permanent headache, it could unleash great psychic powers, but this was the first she ever saw it happen. Well, it seems you passed twice, she said after she got over her shock. What do you mean sensei, asked Hinata. The whole point of my test was to see if you could work together to find the real me. If you landed a hit, then you might have been taken under as my apprentice even if you failed the true test. In this case, thanks to Naruto's Saduk, you passed twice, she said in disbelief. His name is Advil, said Naruto proudly. Kurane bit back a laugh. That was a rather amusing name for a Saduk. In any case, since you passed, allow me to be the first to tell you. Congratulations teammate. We start missions tomorrow. If you can behave and work like a proper team I might clear you for C ranks early. Hi, Sensei, said the three. I hate that cat, roared a certain fox container. Tora did not like him, and for some reason it scratched the hell out of him every time they were assigned the mission. After the third time to capture Tora, Naruto had enough. He gave Advil pills specially designed to either reduce or completely remove the confusion ailment. He tended to buy them in bulk like he did his headache pills, since reading gave him some serious migraines. The moment those drugs kicked in, the team heard a loud feline yowl from the forest. Advil had long since locked onto Tora's minute chakra signature, come on, that cat had to have some chakra to run that long from the genin, and lifted it up into the air. Tora was downright pissed off, and Naruto had Shifter keep that cat in the air until they reached the mission office. The fire daimyo's wife didn't seem to mind, since her cat was unharmed. Naruto looked at Suzuki and said, Team, if you ever get that weird spinny eye thing, can you do me a favor? It's called the Sherry Non, and what kind of favor? Place a genjutsu on that damn cat so it'll think twice about scratching us, said Naruto. Agreed. That cat must pay, said Suzuki. I can paralyze it so that you can put the genjutsu on without hurting it, said Hinata timidly. Naruto and Suzuki turned to look at her. Both were incredulous, before Naruto broke the tension. Hinata-chan, have I ever said how much you rock sometimes, asked Naruto. Hinata lit up like a tomato, happy with the praise. Normally Kurane would have spoken up about harming a cat, but Tora was infamous for a reason. No one liked that damn cat aside from his owner. Hell, they'd probably get praised for doing something to it. The Hokage coughed in amusement as he listened to the genin plot on how to get even with the cat. To be honest, it wasn't the first time one of his shinobi had done so, though in the case of Naruto it was much more likely that the plan would succeed. In any case, the three of you have completed the required number of D ranks to qualify for AC. What do you think Kurane? Honestly Hokage Sama, if we don't get Naruto into a real mission soon that duck of his is going to drive people nuts, said Kurane. Oi. Don't diss the duck, said Naruto. Advil agreed with his partner. Iroko would have gone into a spiel about how the mission's ranking went, but the speculative look Kurama and Hinata's Vulpixion were giving his chair shut him up rather fast. The last time they looked at his chair like that, they set it on fire. Naruto had almost laughed himself sick until he got Advil to put out the fire, though Iroko ended up looking like he had walked through AIM without an umbrella. Honestly Iroko, if we don't get this kid out of the village for a while he'll go stir crazy, said Kurane seriously. The said thing is that it's probably true, muttered the Hokage. He held up three scrolls. Each of these is a low C ranked mission. You can only pick one. What inside? asked Naruto. When it came to missions, he was the one who usually chose for the group. The first is a mission is an escort halfway to Kumo for a merchant. It generally lasts a week. He held up a second scroll. This is a mission to deliver medicinal plants to Suna. It will take two weeks because you will be trading plants with the village. He held up the final scroll. And then there is this. An escort mission to Wave, where you will spend at least a month keeping bandits off the bridge builder. 
He looked at the team, awaiting their choice. Naruto walked up and picked the second scroll. Wave gives me a real bad feeling Jiji. You might want to keep a backup ready just in case if someone takes that one, said Naruto seriously. Sarutobi took the look in Naruto's eyes and knew he had a point. Something about that mission gave him a bad feeling as well. Very well. Teammate, get geared up for a two-week run to Suna. It's in the desert, so it'll be extremely hot. Be sure to prep for 100 degree weather, she warned them. Hi, Sensei. Little did they know what would happen when they reached the village of sand. It was a bit of a surprise to everyone that Naruto didn't complain about the heat, but Suzuki did. Aren't Uchiha supposed to be built to handle heat, asked Naruto seriously. Flames, you ingrate, not this obscene heat wave, snapped Suzuki. Apparently the higher temps made him very testy. Naruto chuckled. And why aren't you complaining Naruto? Out of the three of you I expected you to be the one to complain the most, asked Kurane. His smirk told them he was up to mischief, as he undid his jacket to reveal, Shifter in his glacian form. The amount of cold he was generating made it easier for Naruto to bear the heat. Suzuki nearly castrated his teammate for not sharing it earlier. What do you think Shift? Has he suffered enough, asked Naruto. The icy canine blew a long stream of ice that cooled the air down to more manageable temperatures and Suzuki sighed in relief. About the only ones not suffering from the heat were Yum, Kurama and Hano. Even Advil was inside the odd sealed balls that most shinobi used to keep their Pokemon in when they weren't in a battle. As they continued to walk through the desert, applying the water walking technique to keep from slipping on the sand, Naruto brought up something that had been bugging him. Hey, I've been meaning to ask. Exactly how many Pokemon are shinobi allowed to have? Kurane adjusted her bag, and told him. Trainers are allowed six Pokemon, and no more. Rangers are allowed to have one Pokemon and three backups. Also they are able to ask the assistance of up to six Pokemon, but those usually vanish if released or after they have helped the ranger. Breeders actually have the lowest amount, since they are only able to have four at any given time. Why only four? asked Hinata. Because they are only allowed to keep two breeding pairs of any species, or three different ones in a ditto if they're lucky to catch one. As far as I'm aware, Anko is the only breeder who doesn't follow this rule. I have a question. Why do our seal balls look so weird? Actually the form is universal, but the coloring varies from village to village, unless a shinobi with sealing knowledge figures out how to customize their own. To my knowledge only Jiraiya-sama has every successfully managed to customize his seal ball. What sort of coloration? asked Hinata, curious. Well as you know, in Kanaha the coloring is green and white. In Suna the colors will be a sand-colored gold and night blue. IWA has stone gray and silver. Kiri has sea green and ocean blue. And Kumo has lightning white and storm gray. It would be awesome to have an orange one, said Naruto. Well there are shops that sell coverings that change the color of the ball, but the things are so expensive that most people don't bother with them, said Kurane. She chose to ignore the look of anticipation Naruto had, and could only pray that he would at least wait until he bought orange coverings for his. It took them a few hours to reach Suna, once the heat no longer became a problem. Halt. Passports and reason for visit, said the guard roughly. Kurane handed over the passports, since she decided to keep them on her to prevent Naruto from losing his. We're from Kanaha. We brought some more medicinal plants to trade, she said patiently. The man looked at the passports carefully before handing them back. You'll need to register your partners. Standard protocol, he said. Everyone, bring out your team, said Kurane. Her mistrevious hovered beside her. Naruto grinned as Shifter jumped onto his head in his EV form, Advil yawned as it stood there, and Kurama wagged his tails from Naruto's shoulders. The guard stared. This says here you lot only became Genin two weeks ago. How the hell did this kid get three Pokemon in that time? I've had Shifter for years, Advil I found on the road, and Kurama from the egg, said Naruto proudly. The guard looked at Hinata. Haru I got from the egg, and I rescued Yum, she explained. He didn't bother to look at Suzuki, who was the only genin with a single Pokemon. It was unusual for kids to have more than one Pokemon before they reached Chunin. Whatever. Someone will escort you to the hotel soon, and any damages you cause will go on your tab. Try not to start a war, he asked bored. I'm bored, said Naruto. We don't care, said Suzuki. Can I at least go shopping or something? I always get overcharged in Kanaha and... Wait, 
What do you mean overcharged? asked Kurin Airi. About the only store that doesn't overcharge me on food is Ichirakus. Why else would I stock up on ramen? he asked. You mean to tell me that all this time, you've been paying more than everyone else for basic necessities? asked Kurin A, her key about to burst out. Food and clothes, yes, but not weapons or toiletries. You'd be surprised how quickly people learn their lesson when their store is a frozen wasteland that takes hours to thaw out enough to get in, said Naruto evilly. It was one of the first pranks he played on the store owners when he learned of Shifter's ability. It was also one of the few Hana and some never reprimanded him for. Naruto, when we get back I'm going with you into the stores to have a word with the owners. Don't bother. Some San had a word with them before, so now they only charge me double instead of five times the price, said Naruto with a snort. In any case, so long as you swear on Shifter's life that you won't cause any trouble, I suppose I can let you wander around, said Kurane dryly. Done, said Naruto, jumping off the bed. He was out of the hotel in less than a minute. It was official, he was completely lost. On the plus side, he had already located the equivalent of a park and was playing with the kids. He had been there for a good 15 minutes before he felt the odd spiked key from behind him. Yo. The one spiking his key was about his age, if a little older. He had red hair and a tattoo with the kanji for love. He also had a gourd on his back. Run. It's Gara, yelled one of the older children. Naruto didn't run, though he did have the ball in his hands. Most of the other children scattered, those that didn't were collected by their parents rather quickly. It didn't take long for Naruto and the strange Gara to be completely alone. Gara looked at the boy crazed. Will you prove my existence? Ha! Huh? I'm only here to trade plants for the village. Here, catch, said Naruto. He tossed the ball to Gara, who looked at it strangely. Why had he thrown the ball? Come on, even a Sunanin must know how to play catch, said Naruto with a cheerful smile. Gara looked at the ball and then at the blonde in disbelief. When he was younger and more calm, he often wished someone would play with him. And the odd thing was that this was a Kanahanin who hadn't run screaming or drawn a kunau when he let off his key. It was, rather strange. Why? Why haven't you freaked out from the killing intent I have laced in the area, he asked finally. Dude, I've felt worse from people who actually want to kill me and from girls in my class after I prank their hair. Your key just tells me you're bored out of your mind, said Naruto. Interesting fact about Naruto. He could tell someone's mood from their key when it was unleashed. It came from being hated and attacked all his life, not to mention running from the mobs. Naruto could often tell the best people to hide with from his pranks because of it. It was the initial reason why he trusted some enough to hide behind her the first time he saw her, while he was running away from an angry mob on his birthday. Gara got over his shock long enough to toss the ball to Naruto. Naruto grinned, and it didn't take long for him and Gara to have a game going on. To his amusement, even Gara's Pokemon partner joined in. The tiny Larvitar was rather cute, and it chattered to Shifter and Kurama cheerfully. Advil suddenly popped his head out of the bag Naruto was carrying his wallet in, and Gara stared. Is that a Saduk? he asked. You bet it is. Gara meet Advil. You named a Saduk, Advil, said Gara deadpan. You bet your ass I did. What did you name your partner? Chomper. Gara didn't twitch when Naruto laughed, though his mouth did quirk up when Chomper bit Naruto in the ass. He liked his name. Once Gara finally removed his partner from Naruto, he was definitely trying hard not to grin, or he just didn't know how, Gara went with Naruto around town. Naruto noted the looks Gara got. Huh. And here I thought I was the only one who got those looks in my hometown. What do you mean? I mean the way people look at you is really similar to the way they stare at me. I didn't even know why they hated me so much until recently, said Naruto. I see. You are the same as me then. When they reached the first food stall that wouldn't dare kick Gara out, Naruto held out his hand. Name's Naruto. Naruto Izumaki. I am called Gara no Subaku, he said after a moment, shaking the blonde's hand. Needless to say the owner stared a bit. Dobe. Where have you been? Kurane sensei sent us to look for you an hour ago, yelled Suzuki. Oi, team. Meet Gara. Gara this is Duck Butt, said Naruto cheerfully. My name is Suzuki Fox Boy. Where the hell have you been? We haven't heard from you in over an hour and Sensei was worried, said Suzuki. Hehehe, I got lost. Gara showed me how to get back at the marketplace, 
said Naruto sheepishly. Before Suzuki could put the boy in a headlock, Chomper decided to take action. Naruto was okay in his books, if only because he treated his partner like a person and not a monster. Yo! Get it off! Get it off! yelped Suzuki as Chomper bit his ass. Naruto roared with laughter and grabbed his camera. This was priceless. At least Suzuki had enough sense not to try to hurt the Pokemon. Gara probably would have killed him if he tried. Chomper, off, said Gara tonelessly. It took Naruto a good five minutes to get his giggle fits under control. Suzuki glared at them both. Hey Gara, want copies of Team getting his ass bit by Chomper? Gara's mouth quirked upward. Naruto was interesting, in a good way. He didn't feel the urge to brutally murder the blonde, which was kind of odd for him. Once their respective teachers came to retrieve them, with Baki giving Naruto and Gara a very odd look, the two went their separate ways. But not before Gara had secured a new penpal in Naruto. Now all he had to do was capture a bird Pokemon to deliver the letters. A day before they were scheduled to return home, they got a message from the Hokage. We're going to back up Team 7. Apparently their client mislabeled the mission, so they need help. Once they had the plants sealed, to keep them from dying, they got ready to leave. Naruto immediately vanished to say goodbye to Gara and his team, to his sibling's shock. The two had really bonded when Naruto started acting like Kankuro was more evil than Gara, which startled an actual laugh out of the boy. It nearly gave Tamari and Baki a heart attack right then and there. Kakashi about had it with his team. While Shino and Kiba got along fine, the pink-haired brat was a complete pain in the ass. Her only redeeming quality was that she was a walking shinobi textbook, but her practical skills didn't make up for it. About the only thing going for her was that she apparently had fine-tuned chakra control. He was going to chuck her into the hospital the second they got back in hope like hell that the girl grew up and lost some of her fangirl tendencies. Or at least became an asset to her team. As it was now, she was barely qualified to become cannon fodder. Out of the three of them, only Sakura had frozen up when confronted with actual kill or die combat. There was a knock on the door, and when he opened it, he actually had to keep from weeping with relief. Thank Kami. I was beginning to think my request for backup would go unanswered, said Kakashi. What's the situation, asked Kurane seriously. Our client underranked this mission by two at least. We encountered the Demon Brothers not too long outside the village, and as soon as we stepped foot into Wave we came across Zabuza of the Bloody Mist. I expect to run into him sometime in the week, said Kakashi. Really Kakashi, you're getting soft. Someone of your caliber should have seen he was faking his death, said Kurane. He has a chunin level partner, said Kakashi in his defense. Kurane said nothing, but her look said volumes. In any case, where the hell is your team? Sakura is building her reserves at the moment, since she barely ranks as a genin with what she has now. Shino and Kiba are guarding the bridge since they displayed they could water walk a few days ago. I'm guarding the house, said Kakashi. And what exactly have you taught your team Kakashi, she asked frostily. Where is your team Kurane? Hinata went to find Sakura and the boys are with Kiba and Shino. I can trust them to handle anything that crops up. I still can't believe you got the last Uchiha and Naruto said Kakashi. To be blunt, most of that was Anko's doing. She spends enough time with the kid that she knew he wouldn't react well with a perverted lazy Jounin for a teacher. As for the Uchiha, well she figured it would be better if he was around someone who didn't worship the ground he walks on. Kakashi reluctantly admitted she had a point. If he had gotten the Uchiha, he would have focused on getting the Sherry non up and running, if only to keep the civilian council off his ass. Other than that, he would have mostly done teamwork exercises. Since you're clearly not up to teaching at the moment, I'll see what progress your team had gotten while you were under the weather, said Kurane. Kakashi could only hope that once she learned how bad his genin were she would petition to have the brats given to someone else. He had protested being given a teaching position for years, but the Hokage decided to make him suffer each year as punishment for being late every time. It didn't happen often, but occasionally a genin team was given to another Jounin sensei if the one they have is bad. In any case, having your own genin given to someone else was an almost guaranteed way to blacklist yourself off of the Jounin instructor roster. Kakashi had been so very, very tempted to pass a single team just to do that very thing, if only to get out of doing it. Alas, none of the genin he ever got were worth the time it took to piss them off and get a new teacher. Maybe now he could catch up on his Ika Ika without having to deal with brats. 
Kurane was twitching madly. This wasn't her infamous pervert twitch, or the recently acquired Naruto twitch. No, this was her, I'm going to kill Kakashi if someone else doesn't beat me to it, twitch. Apparently Kakashi was so concerned about teamwork that he neglected to train his gen in anything outside of basic chakra control, which was one of the things Kurane taught her kids within a week of having them. Shino and Kiba both complained about Kakashi's issues, chief among them was the inability to get anywhere on time. Fortunately both had enough common sense to ask for help from their clan to fill the two hour gap that usually came with being Kakashi's student. Sakura had no such help. And Kurane was having great difficulty suppressing the urge to put the brat under a genjutsu in order to get the fangirl squeal to go away. Apparently she was one of the Uchiha horde. Naruto, on the other hand, had no such reservations. After spending some time with Hinata, he had long since dropped any crush he had on Sakura. He slapped her behind the head, hard. She whirled, intent on delivering pain to the boy when Hinata hit her arms with her Jayakin strikes. Let it never be said that being around Naruto didn't give her a bit of a confidence boost. The fact that Naruto was all too willing to give her actual praise hadn't hurt either. Plus there was the fact that Yum had been progressing far faster than any of the other Pokemon barring Shifter who was well used to being a ninja partner at this point. Out of the lot of them, he was the second one to act level-headed, next to Kurane's mischievous Mistrevious, try saying that ten time fast. It was the main reason why he often went off with the two Vulpix to train. While he couldn't launch any fire attacks, due to the odd quirk in his genetic makeup that allowed him to shift through his evolutionary forms, he could still help them with their accuracy. Kurane directed the three bipedal Pokemon to someone she knew had experience with training them. At this point Hano could unleash a flamethrower and a few of the medium level fire attacks, Haru could unleash enough of his aura to mimic Jayakin strikes, which got Hinata's clan off her back and helped her confidence boost, and Advil, well he could now unleash his psychic abilities without relying entirely on the special pills Naruto had. Though to be fair, that was mostly because Advil had long since worked out who his real master slash partner was. When word got out about a Siduk with unusually strong psychic abilities in the village, his original owner came looking for him, wanting to get him back. If it were anyone other than Naruto, the kid wouldn't have been able to entertain the idea of taking back the Pokemon. However because of Naruto's reputation, the boy believed he actually had a chance to retrieve the duck Pokemon. That was blown out of the water when Advil refused to even look at him, let go near him. When he tried to assault the Pokemon Kurane kicked his ass right before the umbu arrested him. He was now banned from ever getting a shinobi career in any village. And Advil was officially listed in every databank as Naruto's Pokemon. That does it. Since Kakashi clearly doesn't know how to properly train new genin, I'll go over a few basics. It won't help out much with Zabuza, but it will at least get you back on the right track, said Kurane twitching. Thank Kami. Someone who will actually teach us instead of forcing us to do boring ass D ranks under the guise of teamwork training, said Kiba in relief. While I agree teamwork is important, Kakashi has clearly neglected technique training to supplement it. I'll have a word with the Hokage when we get back, Kurane told them. The Genin settled in for a long training session, and the two boys could honestly say it was more productive than the ones Kakashi forced them to live through. Naruto was out getting some new plants for his collection back home. He had left enough cash for the Hokage to make it a D-rank that would be paid when he returned, when he ran into the girl. At least it looked like a girl. Beside her was a Glacian, which had Shifter running over to say hi. Needless to say the girl was very surprised to see the EV shift into its ice form and back. Hiya. This is Shifter and I'm Naruto. What's your name? Haku, and this is Kori. What are you doing out here anyway? Aren't you a ninja? Yeah but I wanted to find some new plants for my hobby. I got some soil that none of the usual stuff I get will grow in because it's too moist, but the stuff around here might actually grow in. Haku stared at the kid. For someone who was apparently hyper and cheerful, he didn't peg the kid as a gardening type. Apparently the kid could tell from the expression on his face, because he snickered. I know, I don't look like I could handle weeding for hours on end, but it's true. Plants just make me feel, happy I guess. Shifter changed into his Espeon form and said telepathically it's because you are a creature of the forest. Buildings don't suit your nature, but having large quantities of plants around make it bearable. Haku's eyes widened. He just turned into an Espeon. And earlier he was a Glacian. How is that even possible? I don't know. 
I found him hiding near the trash one day and took him to the closest vet. She did a blood test and found that someone had experimented on him for a while, possibly since he came out of the egg. The only ones he can't do are Flareon, Vaporeon and Jolteon. That sounds horrible. I know. Shifter's been my best friend for years and if I ever find who did that to him I'll kick his ass, said Naruto seriously. Eventually the two dropped the subject while chatting about their partners. Haku was suitably impressed Naruto had three and had only been a graduate for all of two months. Haku then told a surprised Naruto he was in fact a boy, though his glacian was female. At least the boy had helped Naruto find some useful and interesting plants to take home. It was Kiba who noticed Advil acting oddly. The duck kept looking at the water almost longingly. Naruto, in true goofball fashion, took Advil with him while he water walked, while Shifter trained with Kurama and Yum. It wasn't until noon that the duck did something that would have Suzuki, Kiba, and Kurana laughing, hard. The Suduk had somehow picked up the attack hydro pump, and used it to launch his partner into the air. Where he found that one, Naruto didn't know, but he was glad the duck had done it in a place that was deep enough to soften his landing. Still didn't stop his team from laughing at him for the girlish scream, which had Sakura and Hinata tag teaming against Kiba and Suzuki. Kurane had about had it with the pink haired bint. She was too bloody foolish to be called a kunoichi, even the seduction core wouldn't take this brat in, and they took in practically any female who could handle the work. Since the three were likely to get a new sensei anyway with how badly Kakashi had mangled their education, she came up with an evil, yet useful idea. Anko often complained about the fact that she got bored with torturing grown in day in and day out. And a bored Anko was a very dangerous thing to handle. Ibiki sometimes called her in to rein in the woman. However a genin team would appeal to her greatly. Now all she had to do was drag Sakura into the breeder area and make the girl listen to reason that she wasn't suited to be a trainer, which was a high chakra lifestyle once you reach a certain point. She had an idea of how to go about it, and no village would say no to a large influx of breeders or medics. All she had to do was convince Suzuki to mention he liked girls who knew their way around healing and they could get a sudden increase in girls who liked to heal. She knew exactly how to do that too. Naruto had given her blackmail on the boy early on, and it had made training the last Uchiha infinitely easier. Not to mention got his ego down to a reasonable level. She had half a mind to strangle the civilian council for all the damage they had done to his psyche. Even she could see what would happen at the rate he was going. The boy wanted someone to praise him for his accomplishments, not because of his clan. At least she earned his respect early on. He listened to her more than he would have if Kakashi was his teacher. Zabuza wasn't surprised to find Kurane there. Naruto, while chatty, had kept the conversation to plants in a few sparse sentences about his teacher. Kurane had done her best to help Naruto with his issue breaking from Genjutsu. So far they had managed to help him get one technique down, but it wasn't perfect. Haku was disheartened to see Naruto and Shifter. The second Shifter saw Kori, he switched to Umbreon. Naruto followed his line of sight, saw the glacian, and blinked. He put two and two together. Haku was the mystery umbu. Suzuki was in the dome of mirrors with Hano and Kurama beside him. Yum and Shifter were guarding the bridge builder and Sakura, who was the most useless kunoichi to graduate in Kanaha. Naruto was outside the mirrors. He didn't want to hurt Haku or Kori. And from what he could tell, neither did Haku. Naruto had a unique gift in that he could understand people just from one conversation. It was something he picked up while avoiding mobs and drunken idiots who blamed him for the fox. He was better at reading people than a Hayuga or a Yamanaka. It was instinctive for him. Haku didn't come off as cruel or cold. He came off as a breeder, a medic. He hated hurting others but would do it to survive. Naruto knew that trying to talk Haku into standing down was not possible. Unless Zabuza could be convinced to leave Tajuna alone, Haku would continue to fight. So would Kori. So he had to stall for time. When he heard of Ghetto, the man didn't strike him as someone who would pay a missing nin that amount of money when he could let Zabuza and Haku kill the target then stab them in the back. When the mist cleared, revealing Zabuza pinned by Kakashi and Kurane, they found something else as well. Ghetto had arrived with an army of mercenaries waiting to kill everyone on the bridge. Naruto was about to use his shadow clones when he noticed something. Advil's massive headache which always meant that he was about to unleash his psychic powers, was about to go away. So Naruto chose to do something better. Hey Advil, see the short guy at the end of the bridge? Use your power on him. He whispered to the duck. Sigh, 
AI AI. The duck Pokemon looked at the unamused Gato. His eyes, which had been scrunched up in pain, opened to reveal a multicolored pair of orbs. Gato yelled in shock as the Seduck lifted him up in the air, far above the mercenaries. Hey Haku, think you can hit that rather annoying target from here, asked Naruto. Seeing the grim smile on Haku's face made it all worth the while. Between Zabuza and the recently awakened Kiba, the mercenaries went down hard. Kurane went to check on Naruto and Suzuki, who recently awakened his Sherry Non. How did you know Haku wouldn't kill Kiba? You learn a thing or two when you get chased as much as I do. I could tell after talking to him that Haku and Kori aren't cruel. They were just working under a jerk. Kurane stared at him, then made a mental note to introduce Naruto to Ibiki and Inoichi. It took skill to take in visual cues like that and actually get a person's personality down that fast. In the end, the bridge was named after Naruto because he was the one to snap Inari out of his funk, and because he helped to kill Gato with Haku. They were going home with Zabuza and Haku. Mostly because it was either come with them or leave the area. The Hunter Nin certainly weren't about to let someone as strong as the Demon of the Mist stay that close to Kanaha. Kurane took Naruto into the T&I division where Enko worked. Is Ibiki in? I have a student he might be interested in. The Umbu took one look at Naruto and then gave Kurane a look. He's rather good. If he's traumatized and takes it out on us, we will blame you. Fair enough. Kurane, why did you bring this kid here? Kurane told Ibiki how Naruto was able to tell Haku's personality from a single conversation, enough that they were able to take out Gato. Ibiki was very interested in the fact Naruto was able to tell the personality with a conversation. So to test it out he sent the kid in to chat with a missing nin they had captured earlier. Naruto walked out and gave his opinion. The guy's a total jerk. He's all me, me, me like the civilian council but his underlying attitude is like the Hyuga when they're pissed off. He acts all strong but he is insecure like Suzuki. He wants people to acknowledge him but everyone always praises the fact he works for someone else first. He's not a very good aim either. Ibiki stared. While his terminology was childish, it was very accurate. He turned to Kurane. I think Naruto might be a natural at doing profiles. Give me a few days to check. If he is, Anko is going to be a very happy woman. Anko, as it turned out, was thrilled to have Naruto work with her. Too bad she had to split time between training him and her new team. Kakashi was finally blacklisted from the Jounin Sensei roster. He couldn't have been happier. Even though it meant that he wouldn't be allowed missions for the next month or so. It wasn't that he hated children, far from it. It was that he didn't know a thing about teaching. It was a miracle he managed to get the three he had so far on tree walking. All in all, things were finally getting back to normal for the teams, up until the ranking exams came up. Naruto was practically giddy. The ranking exams for Fire Country were about to begin soon. And this year there was another exam going on. The Chunin exam. While the Chunin exam were fairly straightforward, the ranking exams wasn't. The ranking exam had three parts. The practical, the written, and the battle stage. What made it different from the Chunin exams was that each team was split and mixed with others from their village. Those three would have to get through each exam either individually, which in Kanaha lowered your score, unless it wasn't your fault, or as a team to get through the exam. The practical was similar to a survival test. The team had to get through a series of 10 obstacles and reach the end within a certain time limit, which was posted throughout the grounds. The written was a test of their knowledge about their partners, status ailments, and species. The final exam was a one-on-one -on -one battle. You had to get through at least three battles in order to go against a Jounin, and if you beat them then you got a badge. The more badges, the higher your ranking. In order to give the new Jounin a chance to survive, they included an area where they could catch or convince new partners to join their team in the survival area. Most of them were fairly common ones that hatched but didn't get a partner. There were a few rare Pokemon hidden around the place, but the chances of finding one were almost next to impossible. In the spirit of fairness, the Inuzuka and Abarame often contributed a few odd Pokemon from their breeding grounds, but never more than ten. Naruto heard from Hana that this year was special, because the Inuzuka was setting two Absol into the area. It was almost impossible to catch those, and they were rarely given outside the clan. When that was let out, more than a few Kanaha Genin wanted to get their hands on one. Naruto was practically bouncing in his seat at the ramen stand. It was fairly simple why. He was eager to take the ranking exams. 
Garo was next to him, enjoying a beef ramen, Naruto's treat, as he was aghast that the boy had never had a proper ramen before, while his brother and sister were watching him with undisguised wariness. Gara rather enjoyed his bowl, and the fact that the owner and his daughter treated him like family the same way they did Naruto. So Gara, you gonna try to get some new partners during the test. Indeed. Perhaps here they will actually approach me without being forced. All the desert Pokemon don't seem to like me much. Naruto had his head tilted, a universal sign of confusion. Then what about the one in your gourd? Chomper seems to be the lone exception. Not Chomper, he's eating out of his own bowl. I mean the one hiding in your gourd. What? Shifter turned into his espion form. It looks like one of my kin has taken shelter in your gourd. I don't know who she is, but I do know she is able to blend in with the sand. I think she's hiding in Chomper's spot. Gara's eyes widened, and he pulled off his gourd. When he undid the cork, a pair of eyes looked back at him. He could hear something shifting in the sand as a head poked out of the gourd's opening. Tamari and Kankuro both nearly choked on their ramen. Shifter went back to his regular form and went nose to nose with the Pokemon. The Eevee touched his nose to the unknown Pokemon and a light spark passed between the two. Well Shift? What is he? asked Naruto. He went back to a Spion form. I do not know the name of his species, but I do know this. He's one of the 18 evolutionary paths for Eevee. Do you think you can try his form? The Espeon cocked his head, before trying. Without warning, he turned into a new form which Naruto had never seen before. It was two colors. A gold and sand color. His mane and paws were the darker gold color and flowed like sand on a dune. His main body was a lighter sand color that blended perfect with Gara's gourd. He almost looked like a desert fox with the coloring and ears. It seems that all I have to do is come into contact with a new path in order to shift into it. Interesting, said Shifter once he returned to being an espion. What does she say? asked Gara. Shifter listened to his cousin, and answered Gara. She apologizes for stealing his spot, but the sandstorm that day was rather fierce and she was injured at the time. Once she got used to your scent, she rather liked being around you so she stuck around. She wants to know if you wouldn't mind allowing her to stay. Gara was obviously surprised, but in a good way. Does she mind traveling in the gourd? Not at all. She said it was rather comfortable. Gara smiled and nearly gave to Mary a heart attack. It was the first time she had ever seen her younger brother smile without that insane look in his eyes. At least he had a new partner who accepted his presence. So what you gonna name her, asked Naruto. Gara looked at the tiny fox, and said Nozomi. The tiny Pokemon barked, and jumped onto Gara's shoulder the same way Shifter did to Naruto occasionally. Gara almost looked panicked but decided to follow Naruto's visual cues to the new Pokemon. Eventually he relaxed, though he had to get used to the affection the tiny fox-like Pokemon was giving him. Naruto was teamed up with Rock Lee, a genin from the year before and Shino from Anko's new team. Hinata ended up on a team with Tenten and Shuji. Suzuki got stuck with Sakura and Hino to his supreme displeasure. Kiba was left with Shikamaru and Hinata's cousin Niji, who according to him acted like he had a stick lodged so far up his ass it was a miracle he didn't shit splinters, or so he claimed. Naruto and Hinata actually snickered at the description, though it was fairly common among Hyuga. Rock Lee was an unusual case, as he couldn't use a single genjutsu or ninjutsu to save his life. His chakra core was just barely genin level, yet it refused to cooperate, so he had decided to focus his energy entirely on teijutsu, seeing as that was the only thing he could do. However Naruto gave him an idea that apparently had never occurred to Lee or his rather horrifying older doppelganger before. Fuinjutsu. From what Naruto understood of the subject, which was more than even the Hokage knew, it didn't require nearly as much chakra to set up, only a spark to use. Sure some of the higher forms required at least a Chunin level chakra core, but most of the elemental ones could be used by Genin if they knew what they were doing. Lee could set up an explosive tag with his chakra, and that was roughly the standard for most element tags. Guy, his teacher, when asked why they never tried teaching Lee seals, was so surprised that when they did experiment they were shocked at the results. Lee could use seals in place of his jutsu. The only trick was to create the same effects the jutsu like Reikari caused, among others. Naruto became Lee's eternal friend for finding a new way for him to be a well-rounded ninja. Of course Naruto had Kurama incinerate his new jumpsuit from Guy. He was fashion challenged, not insane. 
Before Naruto and his new team went into the forest area set aside for the ranking survival test, they ran into Kurane. He could see the timekeeper, the Pokemon called Porygon Z. The little virus sat on a digital clock which had the time. Inside the forest was the area for the first test. If the three of them passed, then they could leave the tower to try their luck at the survival portion. This go around, the teams had exactly three days to get to the end point. If they caught some extra Pokemon, that was their prerogative. Naruto also finally learned the name of Shifter's new form. Setion. Named after the Egyptian god of the desert set, since I couldn't find an actual name. Remember kids, in order to get to the next part of the ranking exam, you have to get at least 70% of the questions correct. And no cheating, because unlike the Chunin exam we want you to know the answers instead of stealing them, said Kurane. Wait, you mean we have to steal the answers during the Chunin exam? I'm not going to tell you any more. In any event, since you chose to raise your rank instead of going through the exams, you won't be able to participate in the Chunin examination. What, said Naruto. The ranking and Chunin exams are held together for a reason. Most don't bother taking them until they reach Chunin or have failed that exam too many times. Since you didn't know, if you raise your rank high enough, you get discounts on items for your partners and more items available to you. Also, if you get to the second part we'll provide special capture balls. Could you stop please, this is getting too confusing. Said Naruto, holding his head. Kurane chuckled. How about I tell you how the ranking and exams areas came to be instead? That should give you some perspective, said Kurane. The exam wouldn't start for their team for another hour. Each team was given 15 minute intervals before another was sent in, in order to give them a fighting chance. It was more or less a way to ensure the teams got to the center tower injury free, since they had no idea where the others were and the only way for the next team to get in was if the one before them had made it on time. Stalling in hopes of attacking the competition wasn't encouraged here. They sat down, and she told them. A long time ago, before the elemental countries were around, the world was connected through technology. Pokemon were just as widely available as they are today, only they tended to stick to certain continents instead of the elements they suited best like now. As a way to test new trainers, the old way was to have the trainers wander around challenging gyms to get badges in order to earn the right to be called a Pokemon Master. Naturally this system wouldn't work very well in the shinobi countries of today. Mostly because of the tension between countries, the cages of old decided to create ranking exams in place of gym battles. During these exams, the shinobi would earn badges based on their performance. The more badges you earn, the higher the rank you get among the shinobi villages. These badges are actually the remnants of the old gyms, created the same way they were millennia ago before the world was reshaped due to a series of massive earthquakes. I have a question. What part does the forest exam have to do with the rankings, asked Lee. Back during the days of the gym challenges, there was an area called the Safari Zone, where trainers could capture new Pokemon with specially designed balls. It was so widely popular that the cages added it to the exam. It also served as a lesson in fairness, so people outside our village could capture Pokemon that are only available in the Land of Fire. After all, the shinobi who guard the outlying areas tend to take it badly if a shinobi from a rival village shows up for no other reason than to capture Pokemon for their team. It creates unnecessary tension for all the parties. So what sort of things do the examiners look for, asked Naruto. The conditions vary, but in Kanaha we value teamwork and leadership abilities the most. I hear it ranges between villages, which is why they are open to anyone of Genin rank, said Kurane. She looked at the time, then pointed at her watch. They took the hint and got ready to run. The doors opened, and they heard Porygon Z say in its odd voice welcome to the ranking exam. Please note that the forest area is currently empty of Pokemon. Any attempts to capture them without the use of the balls provided to you later will result in immediate disqualification. Thank you, and have a nice day. Naruto paused long enough to shout a hurried thank you to the Porygon Z. The digital Pokemon blinked, then chirped to reply back. The teams were soon separated into individuals. The test they had to do was more of a Q&A than anything else, and they had to make it on their own merits in order to pass. The only reason they had to enter with different teammates was because they wanted the kids to get used to working with others from their own village. Plus it gave them a chance to create a strategy ahead of time to work with the people they had gotten beforehand. Pokemon weren't allowed in the first part, since some people might have a psychic type to cheat for them. 
So Naruto was stuck in a small cubicle thing with weird buttons. He read the instructions in confusion. In order to answer a question, pick the corresponding button slash color. Please pick carefully as you only have one chance to review your answers and change them before your score is tallied. Clearly someone had designed this test just for Naruto in mind, because the instructions were simple enough for even a knucklehead who had never seen a computer before could understand it. Naruto input his name and ninja ID number using the kanji keyboard and waited. A regular Porygon appeared with a wink. Welcome user Uzumaki Naruto. Since this is your first registered use of the ranking exam computers, I'll walk you through the basics before you get started. Naruto liked this Pokemon already. This here is the question. If you need help with the words or want the question verbalized, just ask, said the Porygon, highlighting the top part of the screen. Naruto didn't recognize some of the kanji, so it was a good thing Porygon was there to help. These are the answers. Each question has either multiple correct answers or just one with two wrong. In order to select your response, just push the button with the color that has your answer. Also, please don't press them too hard, as the button could become stuck and you might possibly fail the exam. Porygon highlighted the buttons Naruto could see on his desk. Do you have any questions? I will tell you now that I am restricted from giving you any hints to the answers, but I can help you in other ways. Nah, I'm good. In that case, let us proceed. Question 1, what is the ailment that causes Pokemon to lose health over time during battle if left untreated? Naruto looked at the answers. Let's see, confusion, burned, poison, all of the above. I know confusion causes Pokemon to hurt themselves, burns hurt like hell, and poison tends to suck health unless you have an antidote. Ah hell. I select all of the above, said Naruto, who couldn't pick one. Naruto heard a ding from the computer. You are correct. All three ailments cause Pokemon to lose health over a period of time during battle. Confusion can be cured by recalling the Pokemon so that they can recover. Burns can be healed through either burn heal or certain plants like aloe. Poison can be fixed with a simple antidote or other common plants. Question 2, which of the following is not an evolutionary stone? Let's see, fire stone, dusk stone, cage stone, water stone. I've never heard of cage stone, so I'll pick that. Correct. Cage stone is not an evolutionary stone. Next question. Question 3, how many times can a Pokemon evolve? And so it went. Naruto found the questions much easier than he expected. Then again he spent more time looking up things about Pokemon than actually paying attention in history class. It didn't hurt that Naruto asked Porygon to read the questions out loud for him, and occasionally an answer. After 30 minutes, Naruto came out and waited. His mock team was outside wondering what was taking him so long. So did you pass, asked Lee. I have no idea. Let's go see the scoring. The screen was blank, so they got something to eat. Naruto was the one to discover that they had packs for sale that included survival gear to the forest. Since he had yet to find any of those specialty shops that sold colors to put on Pokemon capture balls, he had enough money to get a set for the three of them. Lee and Shino tried to protest, but Naruto waved them off saying they could pay him back later. They heard an odd bell-like sound and a shinobi came over the intercom. May I have your attention please? All testing for the first phase has been completed. The tallying will be done in 5 minutes. Your scores will be shown on the screen in the lobby at that time. Anyone who has scored under 70 points, we thank you for your time and would like to inform you that the Chunin exam is set for 2 days from now if you wish to try your luck there. Thank you. Didn't Kurane say that people who chose to take the ranking exam can't take the Chunin exam, asked Naruto. Yes, but I think they allow those who fail a second chance to redeem themselves. But I thought you had to be on your own team to take them. There's a special bylaw that allows you to take the exam with your ranking team in case your teammates pass without you, Shino informed them. Well that's good to hear, said Naruto. Another bell-like sound, and they all went to see the scores. Naruto found himself the source of a large amount of disbelief as almost everyone from Kanaha turned to stare at him in shock. A perfect score. Naruto, the dead last at the academy and number one knucklehead idiot shinobi in Kanaha, had gotten a perfect score. None of the other people managed that. Even Sakura and Shikamaru, two of the smartest people in rookies, could barely hit a 93% score. Ehehe. <laughs> said Naruto nervously. I don't believe it, said Suzuki, and Kiba nodded in agreement. 
Iriko looked at the score in disbelief and pride. Naruto had beaten everyone and gotten every answer, even the one that he would miss, right? He looked at the fellow examiners. Well. He qualifies for the badge of knowledge, said Shikaku. How? How the hell did that demon brat get them all right? Asked one of the more biased examiners. Porygon. Could you explain to him how he got them right? Asked Iruka, angry at the other chunin. Of course. The only assistance he asked for was that I read the questions and a few answers out loud for him. I watched him work out the answers verbally before he even considered putting them in. And he went over what he knew again to correct an answer he made earlier. I did not sense the presence of any outside help during the exam. Iruka turned to the rather irritated chunin. Shifter is the only one on Naruto's team that has any known telepathy, and that's when he's in a spion form. He remained in his EV form the entire time. So Naruto did not cheat. He passed on his own merits. The other Chunin grumbled. So, Shikamaru, Sakura, Hinata and Shino all get the standard knowledge badge. Naruto gets the specialty badge which increases his team's intelligence. Agreed, said Shikaku. Those who scored a 95 or higher in the first phase got the actual badges handed out to the trainers of old. Scoring a 90 earned a replica made of inferior materials. Naruto was like an Inuzuka hound on a leash, ready to be set loose on the forest. His team was among those who passed. Their team was the first set loose in the forest, all thanks to Naruto. It meant they had a better chance at finding the Pokemon they wanted before anyone else. They all had the special Pokeballs in their bags. With the whistle, which indicated the breeders had released the Pokemon, they were off like a shot. So, which Pokemon do you want to catch first? Asked Naruto. Hitmanly, said Lee energetically. I personally wish to find a combi. I don't care who I get, so long as they get along with Shifter and the others, said Naruto cheerfully. It was true. Naruto had no set requirement for his team, only that they get along. He never saw Pokemon for their stats, looks or abilities. He saw them for their personality and friendliness. Their first obstacle was a fellow trainer. Getting past him turned out to be easier than expected thanks to Shifter. Ever since Naruto first teamed up with the shape-shifting Eevee, the Pokemon's level and overall stats had shot through the roof. The Jounin had laughed and gave them something that most of the other trainers wouldn't get this early on. Information. You're good for a bunch of rookies. And I like your attitude kid. So I'll part with something you'll thank me for later. The obstacles in this forest aren't the kind you are used to. They're other trainers. Who knows, you might be lucky enough to run into Hokage-sama. Naruto wasn't the only one whose eyes widened. No way. The old man is in here too. Yup. What, did you think he spends all his time doing paperwork? The three didn't say a word, but their expressions said it all. The Jounin laughed, hard. Listen to these wise words little ninja. The bane of all shinobi kind is not the samurai or the baijuyu, it is the evil known as paperwork. Once you hit chunin you'll be stuck doing loads of the stuff, and the higher your rank the worse it will get. There's a damn good reason why none of the jounin commanders has tried to take over for the hokage, cackled the jounin. Naruto chuckled evilly. Paperwork has yet to match my shadow clones, Databia. The jounin laughed harder. Then he waved them off. He could hear another group coming and he had to get his next Pokemon ready. While the shinobi were only allowed to carry a set amount of Pokemon at a time, they were allowed to capture as many as they wanted. The ones they didn't carry remained in a communal training grounds with the ninja ID of their trainer around their neck or arm. When they wanted to switch them out, they went to a nearby computer and put their ball in the slot. The Pokemon would receive a signal and head to the nearest teleport unit to be taken to their trainer. After every six battles, he would head to the nearest Porygon Z timer, which unknown to everyone but the obstacles, doubled as a teleport computer. It was how they got the Pokemon some trainers caught and had too many out of the forest until needed. The teams could use them if they knew about them, but most didn't. It was a nice little perk in what some of the more nerdy shinobi called a Easter egg, whatever that meant. It was a term used years before the shinobi countries were even formed. Naruto was eager to fight the Hokage, who wouldn't be using his full strength since there were so many genin out there. However, after a particularly rough battle that landed Lee with a new fighting Pokemon with a dual element, Polyrath, where it came from Naruto had no idea, they decided to camp out near a clock. Most people never paid it any mind at all. Naruto, however, was chatting up with the Porygon Z at the top. 
Finally, in a fit of annoyance, the thing asked him if he was going to use the teleport device and switch Pokemon or not, because he wanted to sleep. Which left a gaping Lee and Shino. We're allowed to use the communal training ground, asked Shino. Porygon Z rolled his eyes. Any shinobi can use it. You just have to know where the devices are located. You really don't expect the obstacles to lug all those extra Pokemon out of the forest during the exam do you? Though for some reason only the examiners actually know about them. They don't exactly try to hide it. Naruto, I never thought I would say this out loud, but thank Kami you can be an annoying brat, said Shino seriously. Thanks, I think. Wait a minute, what do you mean annoying brat? After that, they didn't try to hold back on capturing any Pokemon they wanted on their team. Naruto was gleeful for one reason. They had come across one of the Inuzuka Absol that Hana had mentioned, and Suzuki would kill him if he got one. Naruto grabbed Kurama. It was time for the fox to earn his keep. Naruto wasn't going to evolve the fox until it hit level 25, which was 9 levels away. Hana had told him the best way to ensure that any Inuzuka Pokemon was as loyal as a Ninhound was to show it who was boss and earn its respect. Her hound doer was like that. Kurama, Flame Wheel. Vol. The female Absol narrowly dodged the attack. Swift. Shuriken like stars hit the Pokemon, and Absol growled. Another idiot who wanted her to be their partner? He was going to have to work for it. The last five hadn't been worth her time. Absol used Fury Cutter, and Kurama narrowly dodged the attack. Shino frowned. Naruto, I think that Absol is. Naruto growled and said, Kurama, Flame Tackle. When the blonde initially heard of Volt Tackle, his initial thought was to combine it with the other elements. So far he had succeeded with Kurama in creating Flame Tackle, a move not seen normally. The Absol had seen enough Inuzuka attacks to know that dodging was the best bet. Too bad it tripped on a root. It got hit, but it didn't go down. It hit Kurama with a nasty slash attack, and the Vulpix cried out in pain. Kurama. Return, yelled Naruto. The Vulpix would live, but fighting wasn't a good idea. Go Shifter. V. Shifter was ticked and ready to get some payback. Shifter, use Shadow Ball. Shifter turned into Umbreon and went at the Absol with a vengeance. The Absol was surprised a little, since the brown canine preferred a Spion because it could talk to its partner. Now use Bite. Shifter bit the Absol in the leg, and Naruto waited. The Absol was weakened, but not out. Shifter, switch out with me. Brian. Shifter tagged Naruto with its paw a universal sign of a tag out. Naruto charged at the Pokemon, startling it and eventually pinned it to the ground with a kunau. So are you going to do this the easy way or the hard way, he asked. Absol took a good look at his eyes, and bowed its head in submission. At least this kid wasn't a total wimp. It accepted the Pokeball with grace. Sweet. I got Absol. I'm going to name you Kiseki. Naruto, Absol are known as the disaster Pokemon for a reason. I know but that's why her name is Kiseki. Because with me she's gonna make miracles happen. Shino sighed. There was no point debating with him. Elsewhere in the forest. The lone male Absol looked at the redhead with something akin to respect. While he disliked the smell of blood, he was born and breed to fight and fight hard. The sight of injured parties because of his doing, when he wasn't doing it for the wrong reasons anyway, the older Absol were quite specific about right and wrong, and winning a battle got his blood flowing. Absol, he cried. This kid didn't even use his Pokemon, and still he beat him, a level 30. If that wasn't worth his respect nothing was. The redhead threw a ball at him and he didn't fight it. This trainer would be worth working with, he could tell. I don't believe it. Said Kankuro. I can. Ever since he ran into that blonde idiot Gar has been easier to live with. The only person he regularly threatens to kill is you, and let's face it, you're pretty damn annoying said to Mary. To Mary, what do I do with this ball, asked Gara confused. He never actually had to use the devices before because Chomper preferred his little hole in his gourd and Nozomi liked to cuddle with Chomper. To Mary blinked, before pulling out a piece of string. For now why don't you wear it around your neck? That way people won't try to steal him once they learn you have an Absol now, she said sensibly. Mostly because Gara didn't have pockets. They had been steadily going through the obstacles which happened to be battles between older, more experienced trainers and rangers. Apparently in Kanaha, the obstacle course wasn't a series of inane tasks that only Pokemon could clear. 
They wanted their shinobi to gain experience as fighters. Tamari could appreciate that since they rarely got to fight outside sanctioned matches due to Gara's sand. For the first time Gara was letting them fight so he could train his team in peace. If Chomper didn't evolve into Pupitar before this was over, she would eat her smallest fan. As luck turned out, Naruto did finally run into the hookage. Sarutobi Hiruzen loved the ranking exams, it gave him a good excuse to be out of that damn office for days on end without Homura or Kotaro bitching about it. Sarutobi deliberately left piles and piles of hellish paperwork for them to deal with. It was payback for the endless council meetings. Best of all, if a team could defeat his Pokemon, whether together or alone, it didn't matter, they almost automatically gained a rank and often got a field promotion as a bonus. Why? Because you needed serious skill and brains to take down a cage's weakest Pokemon. Sarutobi's prime Eep was level 40, a good 20 to 30 levels above most of the other Pokemon in here. Naruto and his team had the good luck of finding the only station to heal Pokemon in the entire forest. And, after filching a good third of its stock, finally ran into Sarutobi. The Hokage grinned evilly. Care to challenge for a rank? Beat me and it's an almost guaranteed field promotion as well as a rare badge, he told them pleasantly, leaning on a staff. Almost guaranteed, asked Shino suspiciously. Well, there have been a few cases of people going too far in an attempt to beat the Forest Master I slash Emi, which resulted in permanent damage or death to their Pokemon partners. We don't exactly let that slide over a simple ranking exam. Ah. And, as a bonus, if you do really well and impress me with your partners, you don't have to take the Chunin exam. Really, said Naruto. Okay, now he was going to beat the old man if it killed him. Sarutobi brought out his partner, Akuma. Named because as a mankey, it had learned rather quickly how to get what it wanted. Generate enough paperwork to make the cage cry tears, and you had him by the balls. Hence the name Akuma, Demon. Jiraiya was enjoying the time at the hot springs, ignoring the explosions and crashes from the ranking exam forest. He had come to warn Sarutobi about an invasion by Orokimaru during the Chunin exam, he really didn't care about the rankings. Most shinobi only concerned themselves with their own ranks before their Pokemon. Even Minato had been that way. Besides, what are the odds someone would become a cage by earning the field badge through all five ranking exams? Little known fact, there are three known ways to become a cage. 1. Be elected by the current one or council. 2. Beat the current cage in combat and acknowledged by the council as the better leader. Or 3 which had never become an issue at this point, earn all five field badges in the various ranking exams in each of the big five and a majority of the badges in each village. Because of an emphasis on strengthening yourself over your Pokemon, this third option has never actually become an issue. Also, the odds of beating all five cages or highest ranking shinobi in each of the big five were astronomical it wasn't even funny. Then again, there hasn't been a shinobi like Naruto around before either. Sarutobi was outright impressed by Naruto. Instead of charging in like he would in his normal mood, he decided to wait and come up with a plan of attack first with his mock team. This was the entire reason they split up the genin cells from each village. Sometimes the Jounin sensei never bothered to work with another team, and it made things harder for the genin to transition without their usual teammates. Naruto was a special case. He didn't see rivalries and clan abilities. He just saw people who he could work with. As a result, Akuma was hard pressed to fend off the tag team of Shino's Kakuna using string shot and Naruto's Vulpix using fire style attacks, some of which he had never even heard of. Then Lee let out his matchup, and things really went downhill. By the time Naruto let out Shifter, Akuma was in no shape to fight. Sarutobi held up a hand. Enough. Akuma is unable to battle. Congratulations. Once the ranking exam is over, you'll have earned a chun invest for certain. Not to mention the coveted badge of the Leaf Master. What does the Leaf Master mean? It means you are strong enough to take out the best and most powerful trainer in the entire village. Most people can't manage that until they hit mid in at least, and you did it while you were still wet behind the ears Jenin. Your clans would be proud, he said. Shino stood straighter. While his Kakuna had evolved once Sarutobi declared the fight over, his father would be very pleased to hear about this. Lee now had something to lord over Niji, since the boy had made many disparaging comments about training his Pokemon alongside himself. Naruto, well, he would be getting a lot more respect once people heard he beat the Hokage with the only Pokemon he had gotten from the egg. Today was looking up. 
Kurane was among many eager sensei to hear how the kids did. The written scores were already news, really, they only had an actual written test during the Chunin exam. There were too many variables for Pokemon to do the same, and the fact Naruto came out with the only perfect score was headlines to everyone else, barring Irika who noticed Naruto read Pokemon manuals during his history lessons and never commented on it. Seriously, he was pretty damn proud of the brat for that one. It was something he could brag about. So when the teams started coming out, Irika looked everywhere for Naruto and his group. Kurane joined him. They ended gaping when Naruto came out with an escort of the Hokage himself. Ha! Huh. Most fun I've had in years. At this rate you'll be an examiner for the next batch of idiots, laughed Sarutobi. You put up a good fight, for an old man stuck behind a desk all day, laughed Naruto. No ramen for you, chuckled Sarutobi. Ah man. Naruto, why is the Hokage leading you out? I'll explain later over food. This brat may succeed in doing something no one has yet to accomplish. Hinata came out looking fine, but had barely scraped a pass from the examiners with her team. Suzuki failed utterly because he had been stuck with a pair of fangirls. Kiba came out bitching like mad because he had spent half the time arguing about fate with Niji. Needless to say Suzuki wasn't going to take the Chunin exam with his mock team. There was no way in hell he was going to deal with both fangirls in Area 44 with no adult supervision. They might very well jump him. Irika wasn't the only one staring at the three. Guy was giving many rants about Lee's youthfulness which no one paid any mind to when the Hokage told them how Naruto managed to work with his team to defeat Akuma, the sadistic prime eep of the Hokage who lived to make the man cry from the sheer amount of paperwork it generated dealing with it. Shino had even agreed to join them, since it wasn't every day you got to eat lunch with the Hokage. Plus as long as he didn't do anything stupid he was almost guaranteed a chin in position. Either way, his clan would be very pleased with him. Irika was still in shock that Naruto had beaten the Hokage, even if it was with the help of his team. Akuma was very, very vicious, which was why the Hokage hated having to use him. Well, that and the paperwork. Dear Kami, the paperwork. That reminds me. I caught a female Absol while we were in there. Naruto, which Pokemon did you use against Hokage-sama, asked Kurane. Kurama. It wasn't until after he got tired out that I brought out Shifter. By then the old man called it quits. The brat is devious, underhanded, and the best damn trainer I've seen in years. Most shinobi never try to experiment with Pokemon moves, and those that do are looked down upon. Had you been fighting me directly, it would have been a bitch to counter against. We are awesome that way, said Naruto. Either way, the fact you beat me through teamwork and the weakest Pokemon on your team all but earns you a chin invest. Keep this up and I might just send you to the other ranking exams. Which badges have I earned anyway? Kurane sensei said they're remnants of the days before Shinobi, but I didn't really get it. The Hokage thought it over. Well, you had the only perfect score in the written, which earned you the knowledge badge. The real one, not the generic one we hand out to those who hit a score of 90. You accidentally found out about the teleport system in the forest, which most people overlook for some reason, so that qualifies you for the extremely rare Hawkeye badge. You found the only medical station long before anyone else knew about it, so you earn the joy badge, and no, I have no idea why they call it that. Finally, you beat me through teamwork and skill, so you earn the leaf badge. All in all, it's a pretty impressive resume for a new genin. Your ranking qualifies you to buy almost all the specialty balls in the village barring a few of the harder to make ones. Shino perked up at that. He only needed to raise his rank by 3 in order to buy net balls, which worked perfectly with his team. Judging by the Hokage's tone, he had managed that thanks to Naruto. And then there's the fact that the higher your ranking, the more you get paid in missions that involve Pokemon. Really, said Naruto. Why do you think most shinobi even bother to go into that exam when half the time their advancement exam comes up? The ranking are easier to take and they ensure you get a pay raise. He's right. Death is very rare during a ranking. Chunin exams, it's almost a guarantee, commented Irika. Plus there is the fact that the first half is an actual written exam with questions so hard that most Jounin are hard pressed to answer them, said Kurane amused. Hey, they just earned Chunin rank after beating the Hokage without doing something stupid. She can divulge a little info about an exam they weren't forced to take. That computer exam was easy. Half that stuff I knew because of the fact I read Pokemon books instead of listening to Irika-sensei, said Naruto with pride. I know, 
and the only reason I never bothered to bust you about that fact was because you actually spent the time constructively reading a textbook, said Irika dryly, a tick mark showing on his head. Well, since the practicals are almost over, let me warn you now that you have only a week before the battles begin. The farther you make it in the free-for-all, the better the chance that you will get the coveted fire medal. Most people who make it past the second round get the generic one which doesn't do much at all, said Sarutobi. He was not looking forward to returning to his office. It was fun while it lasted though. Sarutobi found some surprising resistance to the fact Naruto's group made Chunin with the rare field promotion through ranking exam. Luckily for the blonde, there were so many cameras set around the obstacle areas that his promotion was guaranteed once the clan heads saw him work with his team to beat Akuma with such unconventional tactics. No one with that amount of skill should be stuck a genin because of the fact the civilian council hated him. However this was a shinobi village, and in rare display of the fact that it was a not a democracy as the civilian half believed after Sarutobi kept caving to their ridiculous demands, the Hokage put his foot down and said that the decision was final. Naruto, Lee, and Shino would become Chunin once the ranking exams were finally over. I heard you beat the Hokage during the practicals, said Shivi. I lay all credit to Naruto. He was the one to come up with the idea of using Kakuna's string shot in a way that Akuma would be trapped by a web of flames. Shivi's eyebrow raised. Naruto had me use string shot, then had Kurama set it ablaze while it was around Akuma. Lee had his matchup appear to use hit and run tactics, weakening it further. By the time he finally called on Shifter, Akuma was so worn down by the fiery strings that he called it a match, Shino informed him. An impressive strategy. The Hokage showed us a video of your battle. Young Naruto's cheering seems to be a force of nature with the way it kept the Machup and Vulpix going. Shino nodded in agreement. Naruto seems to be the person who, despite all odds, will succeed in impossible tasks, and even when it's proven that it can't be done will get back up and try again until he's forced to stop, said Shino. Indeed. We shall have to watch his growth. Naruto met up with his regular team and they compared their catches. Naruto had the most impressive since he captured the female Absol. Hinata had added two more to her team. A Wormple and a Chikorita. Suzuki had captured a Houndour and a Ghastly which he found scared both of his teammates witless. Needless to say he was going to have a lot of fun with that. I don't believe it. Not only did you get the highest score in the written, but you also beat the Hokage and earned the coveted Leaf Badge. How the hell did you manage it, demanded Suzuki. While the fact Naruto had captured the Absol was annoying, it wasn't nearly as bad as the fact he had beaten the Hokage. Hell, the only reason he wasn't ticked about being outscored by Naruto is because the blonde had Shifter for years and had taken immaculate care of him. He had to have learned something during that time. It's all because Shino was willing to trust me while I had Kurama out. I had him lace the area around us with string shot, then had Kurama set it ablaze. Lee had his matchup do hit and run attacks the entire time. You should watch out for him, his matchup is really fast. Suzuki nodded. While the use of string shot was a bit unconventional, he knew better than most that bug element attacks were very easy to set ablaze. Fire types had a massive elemental advantage over bugs. Still, how the hell did you entrap a prime eep like Akuma? The Hokage was too busy laughing at the fact Akuma had his ass on fire to help much, shrugged Naruto. Suzuki and Hinata sweat dropped. Akuma was well known for being a pain in the ass to deal with, and the Hokage was too busy to train with it. He only captured the Prime Eep so he could have a decent excuse to escape his office during the ranking exams. While they were chatting, Haku came up behind them with an odd egg in his hands. Yo, Ice Boy. What's with the egg? asked Naruto. Since I am a new breeder, I get an egg to test my skills with. I get to keep the Pokemon inside, but I have to start from scratch. Cory is currently in the Ice Zone in the training grounds until I can join the breeders properly. Well good luck. If anyone can handle a new Pokemon, it's you, said Naruto cheerfully. Haku grinned, and waved goodbye. He seems to be enjoying himself. And I know Zabuza's is having fun cause I occasionally hear him scream in the interrogation room with Anko around, said Naruto. His teammates looked at him and then at each other as if to say, is he really this dense or is he pulling one on us? It was well known by now that Zabuza had a fear of snakes for some reason, and Anko loved to hear people scream. It was a miracle she hadn't jumped him yet, though Haku was beyond amused at his stalker. Tenten. A week had passed, and Naruto met up with Lee and Shino again. 
Even though the battle stages were all one-on-one, -on -one, they were required to appear as a team. Shino looked extra pleased today. Hey Shino, why are you so happy? Thanks to our performance against the Hokage, my clan allowed me into the special area of our compound. I finally have a combi, and it seems some of your absurd luck has rubbed off on me because I have also captured a Scyther. Wow. Isn't that like one of the strongest Pokemon in your compound, said Naruto. Yes, though I am curious how you knew that. I think you mentioned it once in class as an example of bug types, said Naruto. Shino's eyebrow went up. He remembered that? He had given that example in his second year at the academy. Guy Sensei took me to the fighting grounds, so now I have a youthful Tyrogue, said Lee grinning. If there was ever a Pokemon version of you, that would be it, said Naruto sagely. Shino nodded. Naruto snapped his fingers, remembering something important. Well, since you guys let me in on your new Pokemon, I'll show you mine. Naruto, we know you captured Absol and you aren't the kind to show new Pokemon without training it first, said Shino. Nah, I still have Kiseki. Come on out, Advil. Instead of the yellow duck that they had seen a thousand times before, there was now a blue kappa-like Pokemon with a red jewel and slightly pointed bill. Advil evolved yesterday during training. He doesn't need the confusion relief anymore. Naruto was the only trainer to overcome Saduk's natural confusion ailment which hindered its psychic ability through herbal remedies. As a result, Advil was one of the most well-trained Saduk, well, Golduck now, in the entire village. It didn't hurt that Naruto had a habit of finding Everstones, the naturally occurring rocks that kept evolution from occurring, all around the place. It was how he earned most of his money, by collecting them and selling them to Pokemon stores. Most of the evolutionary rocks came from IWA. It was rare to find one outside of the land of Earth. Well, except Firestone, which was a staple of Kanaha's export business. All the major villages exported their own rocks. Mizu had water stones, Kyumo had lightning stones, Suna had dawn stones, but IWA exported the highest number of dusk, ever and other stones. I'm glad to see the news you're receiving the leaf stone didn't go to your head Naruto, said a voice from behind. Iraka sensei Hello Naruto, Advil, said Iraka, trying not to laugh. Really, only Naruto would come up with a name like Advil for a seduk. A slash N or someone who uses Advil and Tylenol enough to get it in bulk, damn headaches. Hello, Iraka sensei said Shino neutrally. Hello Shino. I take it your clan was pleased with the fact you earned a leaf badge. Indeed. My father was so impressed he allowed me into the special areas for an hour. I now have a Pokemon that will make my hive more efficient, said Shino. Well congratulations. Naruto's dumb luck and that the odd pickup ability he seems to have gotten from Shifter had to rub off on someone eventually. Naruto knows pickup, asked Shino. That is the only explanation for how he keeps finding Everstones and Firestones while walking. Said Iraka cryptically. Shino and Lee gave Naruto a look. What? Is it my fault people keep dropping those damn things, he said defensively. Naruto, people don't drop Firestones and Everstones that frequently. If anything they use them if they get a chance, said Iraka carefully. If he keeps finding Firestones, then why is Karama still a Vulpix, asked Kiba who overheard the comment. Didn't want to evolve him before he hits level 25, and he only recently hit level 20, said Naruto simply. Iraka patted his head for smart thinking. Well, have fun out there, and remember, it's not all about the wins. If your team can't handle an opponent, then forfeiting is always an option. Anko jumped up onto a platform that was built for the announcer. Since the Chunin exam wasn't going to start until after the ranking exams were over with, she had asked to be the announcer for the battle exam. Hello Kanaha. Welcome to the biannual ranking exam battle test. Each shinobi will battle it out against each other in an attempt to earn the coveted fire medal. Each trainer has three shots to earn the right to challenge a Jounin. Just because you lost once doesn't mean you're out of the game. Remember folks, if you can't make it past the second round you won't get one. Unless your battle was really, really impressive, said Anko cheerfully. Her dragonair was around her body like a snake. Behind her was a screen that appeared with the trainers in a tournament-style layout. Each trainer or ranger has proven themselves worthy of the tournament that consists of the battle exam. Who will win the trophy and earn the fire medal? Who will be sent with their tails between their legs? Let's find out. For our first matches we have Hayagahinata vs. Tamari. 
Tenten vs Uzumaki Naruto. Gara vs Rock Lee. Inuzuka Kiba vs Hayaganiji. Kankuro vs Abara Mashino. Akimichi Chuji vs Nara Shikamaru. And that's just the warm up folks. Our second matches should be just as exciting. Sadly there were too many teams to fight at once, so we had to split the matchups in half. Once these kitties are done we'll have a break and bring out the next set of matches. One by one the kids came out. Each set had three Pokemon from their teams ready to fight. If they didn't have three, well, that was their problem. The entire forest area was created mostly so that the Genin could add to their teams. Naruto waited for Tenten to bring out her Pokemon, and she grinned at his friendliness. All around them Genin were setting out their Pokemon to battle like the trainers of old. Gara had out his Larvitar, Hinata had Ryalu, Shino had his new Scyther, Lee had his Machup. Niji brought out his Sneasel, Tamari had a Dunsparce, Kankuro had a Shuppet, Kiba had his Growlithe, Chuji had a Graveler and Shikamaru had his Kadabra ready to fight. Go Skoropai, yelled Tenten grinning. Naruto blinked. From what he knew of Tenten, she should be partial to steel types. That was what he assumed thanks to what Lee said. A bug type, really. No one ever expects the bug, said Tenten grinning. Well in that case. Go get M. Advil, yelled Naruto. Golduck. Advil, seriously, said Tenten. Seduck always has a headache. So I call him Advil because that gets rid of them. Cute. But your little Kappa friend isn't going to handle a hit from my Scorpio. And you call me cliche. Bite me fox boy. Scorpio, poison sting. Scorpi, cried the poisonous Pokemon, shooting darts of poison at Advil. Advil, psychic. The duck's eyes glowed a bright blue, and the darts stopped where they were. Now, use hydro pump. Gold. A heavy stream of water came barreling down on Scorpio. The scorpion Pokemon narrowly avoided the blast. Cross poison. Reflect. Advil cried out when he got hit with the poison. All around them were the cries of the stadium, the sound of battle. But none of that mattered to him. All he could see was his opponent in the here and now. Advil, Ice Beam. What, said Tenton in shock. Golduck. The blast of ice was even more impressive than the hydro pump. Scorpio was frozen in a single hit. And it looks like we have the first knockout. Naruto Uzumaki has frozen his opponent solid. As any trainer knows, Frozen Pokemon are automatically considered out unless you have an ice heal. Will trainer Tenten heal her Pokemon or will she switch out? Scorpio, return. Go, Naginata. Skarmory, cried the Steel Bird Pokemon. And it looks like Tenten had opted to switch out her Pokemon, said Anko cheerfully. She was having a ball. Suddenly her attention was on the red head. Oh. And it looks like we have another knockout. And, what's this? Looks like Red's Pokemon is evolving, said Anko. Pupitar, cried Chomper. Now he was roughly Gara's size. All around them, the stadium was roaring in approval. Most civilians didn't see a Pokemon evolve in public. Go Shifter, cried Naruto. Advil returned to his seal ball as Shifter appeared on the battlefield. And it looks like Naruto had called out his strongest Pokemon. For those not around here, Shifter is a rather unusual EV. But why should I explain when you can find out for yourselves, said Anko happily. Shifter, use Flash to blind her Skarmory, said Naruto. Shifter immediately switched to his preferred form. A Spion. A blinding flash of light hit the Steel Bird. It cried out in surprise as it blinked rapidly. What the? Naginata, Steel Wing. S-K-A-R. Naginata's wings turned white, and it went for the kill. Shifter narrowly avoided the attack. Shifter. Ice Beam. Glacian. Shifter tried to hit Naginata, but missed. Shifter, Sunny Day. Blind him again. A Spion. Suddenly the sun began to shine brightly. It was like high noon, even though it was nearly 10 in the morning. Now, Solar Beam. Leafian. The blast from the Solar Beam hit Naginata dead on. The Skarmory faltered, but kept on flying. And there we have it folks. Naruto's partner Shifter. Who knows how many evolutions he can turn into. One thing we do know is that you should never underestimate this wily canine, said Anko grinning. The crowd was going wild with Shifter's transformations. Anko's attention was suddenly on Kankuro. And we have another knockout. Shifter, Leech Seed. Shifter spat out seeds all over Naginata. The vines that grew without pause entangled the Pokemon, 
and caused it to crash hard. It let out a weak cry before it lay down unconscious. Tenten growled. Naginata, return. Tenten has only one Pokemon available to her folks. What will she unleash now, said Anko. Tenten gave Naruto a sour look. She had underestimated him, that much was obvious. And it was clear that he focused just as much attention on his Pokemon team as he did on his own training, something that wasn't true for her. There was only one Pokemon left on her team. Go get M Tonto, said Tenten. Pikachu. Anko whistled impressed. Here's a Pokemon we haven't seen in a while folks. Most people underestimate the common Pikachu, but you shouldn't judge a mouse by its cry. A gathering of these little rodents can cause a thunderstorm. Tonto, Iron Tail. Pika. Shifter, Psychic, cried Naruto in a panic. A spion. Tonto avoided the attack, and landed a solid hit on Shifter. And we finally see a proper hit on this sneaky Pokemon. V. Shifter, hang in there. We've had worse hits and you know it. V, said Shifter, standing straight and shaking off the hit. Shifter, use Night Slash. Brian. Shifter tried to land a hit on the Pikachu, but it missed entirely. Naruto was unfazed. Shifter, Night Tackle. Umbreon. Shifter let out a blast of dark energy, which coated him as he charged at the Pikachu. Tonto, Volt Tackle. A clash of lightning yellow and midnight black collided. It was like the yellow flash was crashing into the infamous black lightning technique. The crowd was going nuts. When the smoke cleared, Shifter was in his EV form, shaking his head trying to clear his thoughts since he had taken a good knock to the head. Tonto, Tenton's brave Pikachu, was shaking from the impact. Are we going to see a knockout, or will these brave Pokemon continue, asked Anko. Everyone had been watching Naruto's match more than the rest. Mostly because it was so interesting, with the way Shifter kept switching his forms. Tonto made a cry, and shook himself. He quit shaking and prepared for Tenton's next command. Tonto, you alright, asked Tenton. Pika. Shifter, you ready for the next one, asked Naruto. V. Tonto, Thunder. Shifter, use Aurora Beam. Lightning met a beam of rainbow-colored ice in a clash of power. The two attacks were so strong that it literally started snowing briefly in the stadium, and the crowd loved it. Naruto was grinning, as this was the first time they had ever fought for real. Shifter kept darting in and out of the Pikachu's lightning, weaving around like it was going out of style. Shifter had more stamina than most Pokemon, barring those who trained with Guy. His HP was through the roof, and years of working with Naruto had his attacks fine-tuned to the point where he operated on the bare minimum of his energy. Where Naruto lacked in intelligence, Shifter made up for in spades. The craftiness of his best friend and partner was beyond what most Eevee could even dream of. If given a chance, Shifter could easily become a Pokemon of Legends. He was already well known in the Eevee community. Shifter skidded to a stop next to Naruto. Shifter, buddy, I think we should go all out on Tenten. Nothing too damaging, because we don't want to hurt her or Tonto, but we want to be flashy as hell, said Naruto. The currently Espeon looked at his partner. He knew Naruto was right. This wasn't about winning or losing. Much like the final round of the Chunin exams, this was about flash and dazzle. This was about putting on a show for the civilians that would make them remember their names for a long time after it was all said and done. This was about being the bigger glory hound. What do you have in mind? Naruto grinned. Let's put on a show. Suddenly the tone changed, and Tonto quickly ate a berry to regain his health. Tenten used a few potions and ethers to restore his stats. This was an all or nothing round. If Naruto took out Tonto, she was done. He still had one Pokemon left and he had taken out two of hers already. Ready shifter? Blizzard then icy wind. Glacian. The temperature of Hinokuni was as close to tropical as you could get without being overwhelmed by it. Even the nights were rather mild, particularly in Kanaha. All that changed in a heartbeat when the blizzard attack took effect. The temperature dropped nearly below zero in an instant, as the icy wind blew it around in dazzling swirls of ice and snow. Shifter angled his icy wind in a way that it became a tornado of ice, snow, and sleet. Tonto tried to stand his ground, but he was quickly swept up in the whirlwind of cold air. Tonto, cried Tenton. She knew he wouldn't be able to land easily when he was so cold. Shifter Psychic, yelled Naruto. He didn't want the tiny mouse to be hurt after all. 
Shifter switched from Glacian to Espeon so fast it would give a ditto whiplash. His entire body glowed as he caught the semi-frozen Pikachu. Chu. Said Tonto in pain. Tonto, cried Tenton. Naruto got there first, digging something out of his side bag. He quickly sprayed it on the tiny mouse. Pika, said Tonto. He blinked and shook off the ice. He quickly bound up to Tenton. Thank Kami you're alright, said Tenton. Ehehe. Sorry for going overboard Tenton-san, said Naruto. Thanks for catching and healing him, Naruto-san, said Tenton. It was then that they bothered to notice the roar of the crowd. They were so caught up in the battle they had forgotten this was a live event. Talk about a hell of a way to wrap up a battle. Did that make your blood boil like it did mine folks? Winner of the first preliminary matches are Chuji Akimichi. Gara of the Desert. Tamari of the Desert. Shino Abarame. Kiba Inuzuka. And Naruto Uzumaki. Let's give them a round of applause, said Anko cheerfully. The crowd, who had more or less kept their eyes on Naruto except for a few rare occasions, went absolutely wild giving the genin a standing ovation for the battles. For most civilians, the fight between Naruto and Tenten was as close as they would ever get to the real thing between Shinobi. Tenten was relieved that all her Pokemon were quickly given a clean bill of health from the breeders. Naruto's quick healing of Tonto had saved him from a nasty frostbite burn in a fall. Hey Naruto-san, how does Shifter change his shape like that? I thought evolution was permanent. When I first found him, I learned that he had been experimented soon after he was hatched. I don't know what they did to him or why, but the end result is that he can take almost any form of the evolutionary line of his kind except for fire, water, and lightning. He can switch between any of the others like it's nothing but those three are outside his reach. It doesn't really bother me because I have others to pick up the slack. How many can he change into? 5. Dark, ground, psychic, ice and grass. 5. 6 if you count his normal form. Tenton gave him an odd look. How would you like to add number 7? Tenton went to a computer and switched out Scorpio with another Pokemon Naruto had never seen before. It was clearly a steel type, and it almost looked like an Eevee. But he had never heard of it before. Meet Adamantion. I think he's an evolution but we were never able to confirm it. I'm going to call Eevee's steel evolution Adamantion after the legendary material Adamantite. It's on the same class as Mithril. Shifter went nose to nose with the odd Pokemon. It was different shades of grey and had a spike ball for a tail. It almost looked like a robot with its red eyes and little horn on the end of its nose. It had several stripes along its body like armor plating. A jolt went between Shifter and the odd Pokemon, and the Eevee blinked. He tried to turn into his steel form and immediately shifted into an almost copy of the one before him. The new Pokemon barked in surprise but recovered easily. Well that confirms it. Adamantion is an evolution. You sure? Shifter can only take the forms of one of the evolutionary paths, and the only way to access the others is by coming into direct contact with another element. So far he's only gained his ground thanks to a Setion that Gara had in his gourd. Well at least I finally know what the heck she is. Isn't that great Addy, asked Tenton. Ada, the evolution barked. Addy jumped into Tenton's arms, enjoying the attention she was giving her. Tenton rarely brought her out of the training areas. Two hours later the second preliminary matches were over. Naruto was practically bouncing in his seat for his next match. Here are the Pokemon on Naruto's team as per your requests. Shifter. Species, male EV. Type, normal by default, but it changes when he does. Level, 33. Moves, due to genetic tampering and the odd exercises his partner concocts, his moves aren't easy to guess ahead of time. As such this spot is left blank. Ability, whatever suits the situation at the time. Ibuprofen, Advil. Species, male Golduck. Type, water slash psychic. Level, 29. Moves, psychic, psi beam, confusion, hydro pump, ice beam, bubble beam, rain dance, double team, water gun, bubble, reflect. Ability, swift swim. Karama. Species, male Vulpix. Type, fire. Level, 23. Moves, Fire Blast, Flamethrower, Ember, Bite, Double Team, Tackle, Smoke Screen, Sunny Day, Swift, Flame Wheel, Flame Tackle. Ability, Pick Up. Kiseki. Species, Female Absol. Level, 30. 
moves, due to the fact she's so new, Naruto has no idea about her moves just yet. Ability, he has yet to learn her ability. As for why there aren't any rare or legendary Pokemon in any of the chapters, that's because it's still rather early. Naruto will eventually encounter Asuakun, Lugia, and Celebi, I can guarantee that much. Now, on to the story. Naruto won his next two matches, though on the third one he actually had to call on all three of the Pokemon he was allowed to use. Because this was a ranking exam, he wasn't allowed to evolve Karama until after the battles were over even though the Vulpix had recently hit level 27. His only partner from the egg had been awaiting the evolution as much as Naruto, though everyone he mentioned this to agreed that rushing things was a very bad idea. Naruto had read a story of how a Pikachu defeated its evolved and higher leveled form simply because it used speed against the Reishu. So he put Karama through the same training shifter went all those years ago. Karama was roughly at the same level shifter was at that point in time, but he would never be able to match Naruto's first Pokemon partner. It was a tired team who finally earned the right to challenge a Jounin. If he beat his final opponent, he would earn the fire medal easily. He already qualified for the generic one. His opponent, was Kakashi Hatake. The laziest man Naruto had ever met outside the Nara clan. Naruto brought out Karama first. His Vulpix needed more EXP to level up to 30. Kakashi did his usual ice mile and brought out a Maitaina. In the end Naruto recalled Karama before Kakashi hurt him too badly, he was already feeling the effects of two straight battles in a row, and sent out Advil. Kakashi's first Pokemon was beaten easily, his second, not so much. It had surprised Naruto to learn that Kakashi had a Jolteon on his team. Even more so when he saw the absurd speed the thing had. He later learned that it had been given to him by his sensei, and Kakashi had evolved it in honor of the man. Seeing a Pokemon version of the Yellow Flash was something Naruto rather enjoyed. Watching what happened when he set Shifter on the Jolteon, however, not so much. The Jolteon, already tired from Advil's Ice Beam, was in a foul mood. It snarled at Shifter like it wanted to shoot a spike cannon at him. Naruto didn't like the look at all. The Jolteon barely listened to Kakashi's commands, often launching attacks without his order. He was almost as bad as Akuma, only this time his opponent actually cared if his partner got set on fire. Suddenly Shifter went into his new steel form, which he had yet to use, and on Naruto's command launched an iron tail at the Jolteon. The yellow and white Pokemon got up, but Naruto gulped when he saw the look in his eyes. He had gone from angry to downright pissed. Kakashi actually looked worried about it. Shifter, on the other hand, looked irritated. This was not how an Eevee was supposed to behave. So he did something that had Naruto wondering why he didn't think of himself. He bit the Jolteon rather hard on the leg and broke a bone. He didn't notice the spark that went between him and the electric type. The same spark that went between him and any evolution he encountered for the first time. Kakashi immediately withdrew his Jolteon, who he named Minato after his teacher, and threw out his last one. A houndom named Jigoku. Naruto had made a token effort at bringing down Jigoku's HP before he forfeited. He could see easily that Shifter wasn't able to take down the fire slash dark type, and he didn't see any reason to risk Shifter's health on a mere ranking exam. He would have other chances to get the fire medal. Kakashi applauded his common sense. So did the Hokage and most of the shinobi forces who actually saw their Pokemon as more than pets. Anko waited in the lounge, taking a deep drink of the ice-cold water to soothe her throat. Being the announcer for the final ranking exam was fun, but hell on the throat. It was why Hayate was never allowed to do it, since his lungs were so bad. Finally the Hokage came in with the list of people to earn a fire medal, whether it was the standard or the true one. She enjoyed her 10 minute break before grabbing the mic, picked up Siriuo, her dragonair. She named it after the god of the east, and walked out to the stage which was set high enough to avoid getting hit by attacks, and that was before the barrier took effect. They had a special barrier to protect the announcer, since sometimes trainers and rangers thought it amusing to aim a few when the announcers annoyed them with sarcastic comments. Sarutobi sometimes said they had to develop it for people like Anko in mind. Sorry for the delay folks. However here are the results. Those who have earned the coveted true fire medal are. Gara no Subaku. Tamari no Subaku. Hinata Hayuga. And. Naruto Izumaki. The names of those who have earned a standard fire medal are, Shino Abarame. Tenten, name cut out by Mike. Rock Lee. And Shuji Akimichi. To all the others, 
Better luck next year. The first thing Naruto did once the announcement was made was take all his Pokemon to the breeders for an all-out physical exam. Followed by a day off just relaxing. Naruto did occasionally pamper his team. Naruto stared at the man in the hot spring in shock. What the hell did he think he was doing, peeping on the girls like that? He knew for a fact Kurane sensei was on the other side at that moment. Naruto growled, then leaned down to Shifter. Shifter, I want you to turn into your steel form, sneak up on that guy and bite him as hard as you can in the ass. See if you can do it hard enough to alert the other side, whispered Naruto. V. Growled Shifter. He liked Kurane as much as Naruto did. Screamed the pervert, who screamed so loudly that not only did it alert the girls on the other side of the fence, it got the Umbu's attention pretty quick too. The white-haired pervert with the toad was surrounded by Umbu in seconds, and the girls were all grabbing Kunao. One of the Umbu realized what happened, and hit a snicker. Genma may love Jiraiya's work, but even he wasn't stupid enough to piss of Naruto so much that he had his Eevee bite him. Jiraiya. Why am I not surprised, growled Kurane. She noted it was Naruto who alerted them and nodded at the boy who beamed at her. Come on shifter, let's go swim while these lovely women strangle a pervert, said Naruto cheerfully. V, barked shifter pleased. The screams of the pervert was music to Naruto's ears. Jiraiya was entirely unamused with Naruto when he left the hospital. He was going to be in Kanaha for the Chunin exams, and then he was gone. He had actually expected the boy to be there and not take the rankings. Now Naruto was guaranteed a Chunin vest once the second half the Chunin exams were over with. Still, it was fun seeing the look on the kid's face when he had a toad drop on his head. A toad that was easily the size of the average Arcanine. And who raked to high heaven. At least up until the point that the kid had his bizarre Eevee bite him in the ass again. This time the Umbu didn't respond. Jiraiya had chosen to approach the kid on his own free will. If he decided to do something that antagonized the kid's EV, then it was his own damn fault. Seriously kid, stop setting that freaky Pokemon of yours on me, said Jiraiya, nursing his poor, abused bottom. Shifter is not freaky. Keep calling him that and I have him hold you in the air while I tie you to a post, growled Naruto. EV can't switch between their evolutionary forms. It's a known fact, he said calmly. Naruto was ready to shove a kunau where the sun didn't shine. Instead he had a better idea. Call him freaky again and I'll brand you a pedophile, he growled. What? Don't think I won't. No one insults Shifter or any of my team and lives to get away with it. Get used to it kid. Someone was bound to comment on it eventually. I'm surprised no one has yet, said Jiraiya flatly. Have you even bothered to ask around before you decided to talk to me? Everyone knows why Shifter can change between forms. It's not that big a secret said Naruto in surprise. What? Oi, old man took it. This dingbat's paying, yelled Naruto, who vanished. Jiraiya hadn't bothered to count while they were talking, he was too busy trying to ignore the pain he now felt in his ass, but now he did. And he paled. Naruto and his Pokemon had consumed 50 bowls of the most expensive ramen the stand had to offer. And there was that look in the chef's eye that told him he wasn't going to get out of paying. Jiraiya's next stop before he went to pester the blonde again was his old teacher. Shifter? You were dumb enough to insult Shifter to his face, said Sarutobi in disbelief. I commented on how bizarre that ability was and he threatened to get me branded as a pedophile. I don't blame him. Shifter was, as far as we can tell from Hannah's extensive tests, experimented on almost immediately out of the egg to change form. I suspect Danzo had a hand in it but never pushed it since no one came to reclaim the EV and Naruto didn't want his partner to be hurt anymore. It has taken years for Naruto to get Shifter to the point where he can switch without warning, and everyone knows he picked the EV off the streets. You mean to tell me that an EV who can change forms at will is common knowledge? It has been for nearly three years. And no, as far as we can tell it won't be given to his children. When Shifter started getting frisky we let him out with the other EV but none of the eggs showed the same trick. He's one of a kind. Jiraiya pinched the bridge of his nose. You mean to tell me my godson found a shiny EV and no one thought to tell me? Sarutobi laughed, hard. You think he's a rare shiny type? Everything about his powers, his attacks, even his speed was all earned the hard way. Shifter and Naruto paid for their power in blood and hard work. Yeah. Well that bite of that damn EV sure as hell didn't feel like an EV. It felt more like a damn feraligatr, growled Jiraiya. 
That's because Shifter loses teeth every month. He tends to gnaw on toys a lot, and at the moment Naruto has several rock toys for him to chew on. His teeth are very sharp and very strong for an Eevee. Meanwhile, with Naruto. Found it. Finally, said Naruto. In his hands were a few books on the world before the cataclysm. This is what the shinobi called the series of earthquakes that resulted in the land mass changing and the birth of the elemental countries. 5000 Ryo for the set, said the clerk board. Naruto grabbed several books and brought them to the counter. They were all about Pokemon. Thanks to the fact he had a much, much higher rank than he had before, he only had to pay a fraction of the cost. This was one of the few stores that didn't overcharge him. Naruto quickly sealed them in a scroll and put it in his kunao pouch. Well, all but one which described the world before the cataclysm. Kurane's talk about the world before had gotten him very interested. And Iraka never covered the days before the cataclysm. If he had, Naruto might have actually paid attention to his history class. In the days of old, before the elemental countries existed, there were many trainers and Pokemon. It is still unknown how or why, but one day a series of massive earthquakes struck the lands, causing many lands to be reshaped. Islands vanished and new ones appeared, for example see the land of waves in chapter 5, cities were torn asunder and many people died. The most astonishing thing was that the Pokemon vanished for 10 years, causing many of the humans left behind to learn new skills in order to survive a changing world. This lead to the first appearance of the shinobi sect and the creation of many villages such as the first Uzushiagakur, or the village hidden in the whirlpools. For information on village in the whirlpools, see chapter 10, about the hidden villages, dot. Naruto was entranced by the story of how the shinobi first came into being. He spent hours simply reading how the first Uzukage made a bargain with one of the few Pokemon to remain in the world, the legendary Lugia. It wasn't until the sun set that he went home. And it was there he dreamed of a great Pokemon of silver and blue with a cry that sounded so familiar. A month had passed for the teams, and Naruto was a bit of a celebrity among the trainers. He had earned more badges than any other genin on one go, some of them so hard to get that most Umbu didn't have them. The end result was that Naruto was getting a lot more respect than he was used to. Not that he cared, because he finally found one of the places he had been looking for. A place that sold custom seal balls in a book on how to make your own. Naruto bought a ton of orange, blue, and fire red seal covers in the book. Thanks to his higher rank, the amount of Ryo he had to shell out for the covers was roughly the same amount as a D-rank mission pay. He was a very happy boy for the rest of the day. Jiraiya was still attempting to apologize to the boy when he saw him. Naruto was still pissed at how he treated Shifter. Finally Jiraiya tried his biggest bargaining chip he was willing to give out. The ability to summon toads. Naruto looked at him and said, are we talking actual toads or something like a polytoad? Real toads, not Pokemon. There aren't any summoning scrolls for Pokemon anyway, said Jiraiya annoyed. Why summon when you can capture them? Let's see them then. Summoning Jutsu, Toad. Yo, said a small orange toad with a vest. This is what you're so eager to get me to sign, said Naruto. Oi. What's so bad about toads, asked the orange toad. Nothing. It's just that. Grr. Just because we're not as cool as a Pokemon doesn't mean we can't kick your ass. Naruto grinned. You're actually kinda cool. Still, why should I be interested in signing a Toad contract? It took a moment for Gamakaki, the Toad, to realize this kid was looking at Jiraiya. Clearly this kid knew to ring the sage for all he was worth. Grr. How about this kid? I'll let you sign the contract and teach you in a rank jutsu, he asked his eyebrow twitching. This was a hell of a lot of effort just to get the kid to learn his heritage. And he was really starting to wonder if the kid knew he was his godfather. Let's see the jutsu first. Jiraiya summoned an orb the size of a seal ball and destroyed a nearby tree. Sold, grinned Naruto. Let it never be said Naruto didn't know how to trick a sage. Gamabunta was laughing when his son told him about the new summoner. Naruto clearly took after his father if he was able to trick Jiraiya like that. Still, he wanted to meet this kid himself. And possibly pass on something his father had left the blonde that Jiraiya didn't know about. His notes on the Hyration, the technique that made Minato the yellow flash and the fourth. Jiraiya only had the incomplete version, Minato had it on him when he went to face the Kyuabai and asked that Gamabunta pass it on to his son when he was ready. Damn it all to hell. I will get this right if it kills me, snarled Naruto. 
Jiraiya had shown him something called the Raise Non. He had gotten the first stage easily enough thanks to help from Shifter, but the second stage wasn't as easily cracked. Finally he decided that a break was in order. He went off to the ramen stand. Only to find it too full. He sighed. This stinks. Ichiraku's is booked and hardly any of the stores would let me in without overcharging me. Chuji, who had been passing by overheard that comment. He was on his way to the barbecue restaurant he frequented and offered to let Naruto come with him in exchange for half the tab. Considering Naruto had enough cash for an all-you-can-eat at his favorite ramen stand, which amounted to a mid-C rank pay, he grinned and agreed to it. The battle between the Akimichi and Uzumaki was both entertaining and funny. Chuji and Naruto fought over the meat and vega tables, both grinning like mad. The other patrons watched the floor show with amusement, listening to the two argue over the food. Beside them were their partners, all sweat dropping. Fortunately Naruto had paid for the Pokemon-only specials which meant neither boy went near it. Chuji's Eren was eating the metal specials while Shifter debated steel-type moves with it. Naruto got the second half down two weeks before the third half to the Chunin exam was supposed to happen. Because he recently got his new Chunin vest, Naruto didn't have to participate. Not that he could have considering the exam started roughly five days after the written test for the ranking exam. Jiraiya had grinned and told him to combine the first two in order to finish the third stage. It wouldn't be until a week before the third exam that he actually managed it, after he went to Anko for damage to his hand. She had been annoyed when she saw what he did to his hand. She had forbidden him from doing more than reading for three days before he was allowed to continue his training. So he spent that time reading more on the history before the cataclysm. Before the cataclysm, there were many technologies which have since been lost. One of which is a device that healed Pokemon while they were still inside the seal ball, which during that time were called Pokeballs. The manufacturing process for these Pokeballs are another key device which has been lost to the ages. It was the Uzukage of the time who came up with the use of seals to carry and transport Pokemon 20 years after the cataclysm. Why they vanished for two decades is a mystery which has baffled researchers since their return. One thing is certain however. Had the Pokemon not vanished, the development and discovery of Chakra and how to use it would never have been found. For more information on the first use of Chakra, see Chapter 5. Jiraiya was beyond surprised to find the boy actually reading a history book. His grades in that subject were phenomenally bad after all, he wasn't nearly as surprised as Iruka was, consider Naruto though history was so boring that it put him to sleep. Needless to say he had Kurane check for Genjutsu an hour after seeing what his favorite student was reading. It wasn't until Naruto went to get a book on the history of the village hidden in the whirlpools that he asked something that put the Hokage in a bit of a bind. It hadn't been until he picked up the history of Whirlpool that he learned the ruling family had been named Izumaki. And that they had a history of sending people to the leaf. And since his last name was Izumaki. You can see why the Hokage had a bit of trouble. On one hand, the boy was ready to learn about his parents, on another, the village still had some foreign ninja running around. So he compromised. He promised to tell the boy about his mother now, and tell him about his father after the exams were all over. Naruto was positively giddy to learn about his mother. He couldn't wait to hear about his dad. What's got you in such a good mood Naruto-kun, asked Hinata. She was currently in a good mood herself since her performance at the ranking exams got her father off her back for the next month. The old man finally said he'd tell me about my parents. He said my mom's name was Kushina and that she came from the land of whirlpools, said Naruto happily. Suzuki looked up from the book on dragon Pokemon care when he heard the name. Kushina? As in Kushina Uzumaki? I know of her, she was my mother's genin teammate. She used to be called the hot-blooded Havnero. I think I still have my mom's old genin picture somewhere around the house, said Suzuki. Cool. My mother used to talk about her all the time. She said that Kushina never took crap from anyone and her nine tails was the strongest in the village. Before that night, she once mentioned it was around the village sometimes. Something about the Pokemon being attracted to a certain key that Kushina had. Said Suzuki. The next day Suzuki showed up with a picture. In it was a female Uchiha, a boy from the Inuzuka clan, and a tomboy girl with bright red hair with green hair clips. Suzuki pointed to the boy first. Kuro Inuzuka. This is my mom and this, is Kushina. Naruto couldn't believe his luck. He definitely took after his mother a lot, because he had her cheeks and nose. From the look of the photo, it was clear he also took after her in personality. 
Now that he had a face to go with the name, Naruto showed them his new history books. Suzuki made the appropriate comment about Naruto not looking like a fan of history until he learned they were about the world before the cataclysm. Even Suzuki could see why Naruto was interested. Unlike the history of the shinobi nations, which was so boring that it had once put him to sleep, the world before was full of Pokemon and people coexisting. And if there was one thing that was sure to keep Naruto's interest it was to learn about Pokemon. Wow, so your clan was the one to come up with seals to replace Pokeballs, asked Suzuki in surprise. Unlike before, when someone wanted to write a history book they had to double and triple check their facts. Still, some of the facts could be mistaken since it had been so long ago and quite a bit of it was easily speculation. I wonder what it would be like in the past, asked Hinata. Dunno. Be a lot different from it is now. I mean back then shinobi weren't really around as much as they are now. And Pokemon were available to everyone, said Naruto. Yeah, but imagine how much harder it was to live without them for 20 years. I mean those people were so dependent on Pokemon that it forced them to turn to Chakra, said Suzuki. So you guys going to the third stage, asked Naruto. Nah. The entire survival exercise during the exam showed me that I have been slacking way too much on my team's training. What if Hano had been a Charmeleon? I bet we could have made a better showing if he had evolved, said Suzuki. His strongest Pokemon were the freshly caught ones. Hinata nodded in agreement, her team could use some training as well. Besides, it wasn't like any of their friends had gone into the exams. Naruto was training his ass off trying to master the Raisinon. So far he had a rough version down, but he had yet to get it to the right size. Close by Suzuki was having his team spar with Naruto's, who fought under the guidance of one of his clones. Naruto's clone wasn't trying very hard and was letting the other Pokemon earn some experience while he worked with Kiseki. He finally figured out that her ability was pressure, which made doing attacks twice as hard as they could have been. That was the perfect way to get Suzuki to think before he ordered an attack. Hinata worked with Kurama, who was recently evolved into a Nine Tails once he hit level 30. Naruto had placed a Fire Stone on the ground and left it up to the Fox Pokemon. Kurama touched the stone and became a beautiful and very sleek Nine Tails, and was trying to level up her team. Her father had actually approved of her decision to spend the day training and had left her alone. She paused when his clone went to heal both Pokemon to see what he was doing. From what she could tell, he was trying to make a miniaturized Kaiden. Naruto, what is that? According to the pervy sage, this is called the Raise Non. I got the power and shape down, but the form refuses to take, he complained. Hinata thought about it and decided to try to see if she could help. That almost looks like the Kaiden, only a lot smaller, she admitted. Naruto's eyes light up. Think I could see your Kaiden, he asked. Perhaps he could get an idea from that. Hinata nodded, and took a stance, giving everyone a lot of room. All of them had taken a break to watch. Kaiden, she cried, expelling chakra all over her body while spinning. Naruto watched closely. He got an idea of what to try, and waited for Hinata to stop spinning. Thanks Hinata. Let's try this one more time. Raise non. Naruto took both hands and started to swirl the chakra in a vortex of currents. This time he kept it compact like Hinata did her chitin. The currents fought him, wanted to expand, but he didn't let it. Finally they settled down into a shape very similar to a seal ball. Naruto quickly pushed it into the boulder, causing a lot of damage. I did it. Finally. Thanks Hinata, he said, hugging her. She meeped, and turned red. How many hands does it require? You had to shape it with two, Suzuki pointed out. Good point. More training he said cheerfully. In the meantime, huh, said Suzuki. Hano was spewing fire like an Uchiha in pyromaniac mode. When it was all over, he wasn't a Charmander anymore, but the second stage. Char, said Hano. He had a lone horn on his head, his coloring was a bit darker and the flame on his tail was bigger than before. Plus his claws were a bit bigger and it looked like he had actual hands now. Hinata noticed one of her Pokemon had evolved as well. Her new wormpool had turned into a silkun. Her Chikorita was almost ready to become a bay leaf. Naruto looked at his clones. You guys ready to continue, asked Naruto. You should switch out your Pokemon. Karamo looks like he could use a break and Kiseki is almost at her limits, said Suzuki. Hmm. <laughs> Good point. Kiseki, Karama, return. Go Shifter and Advil, said Naruto, 
reclaiming the two and releasing his gold duck. Shifter got up from the branch he was sleeping on and jumped down. Suzuki looked at Hinata. Jen can to see who gets Shifter, said Suzuki. She nodded. Neither of them were particularly eager to fight the crafty Eevee. Suzuki was displeased to have lost to Hinata, but took the news with ease. Time to train his ghastly and houndoer. Jiraiya watched the kitties train with interest. Seeing how at ease they were with the fact the Eevee changed forms, they never batted an eye, he could only conclude Sarutobi had been telling him the truth about the fact it was common knowledge. He watched the Eevee shift forms so quickly it would make his head spin if he though about how it was possible. He watched the Uchiha boy help his new ghastly evolve into Haunter and then shuddered at the evil cackling the boy did at the thought of how he could prank his fangirl horde. The girl kept training with the gold duck named Advil, he hit a snort at the name, and helped her Silcoon evolve into a beautifully. The butterfly Pokemon immediately sat on the girl's head and the girl switched it to her Chikorita. As Jiraiya watched the kitties train, he couldn't help the feeling that he had seriously been slacking on his own team. He rarely called on any of them unless it was to serve as a distraction. Time out, yelled Naruto. What's up, asked Suzuki. I think we all did enough training today. If we make them level up too fast it will hurt them in the long run. Let them get used to the new forms before we do another hard training day, said Naruto sensibly. Is it just me or does he actually become smarter when it comes to Pokemon, asked Suzuki to Hinata. She nodded emphatically. Well, that and I want to challenge the pervert watching us, admitted Naruto. Pervert, said the other two in unison. Shifter, Ice Beam. Glacian. Aiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiii